WLVR in Washington. More than just headlines. The latest news from around the world. We are Radio VR in Washington. Fossilized evidence reveals the Spazosaurus was the largest doofus ever to roam the Earth. And a new tandem mobility scooter is released. This is the Onion Week in Review, damn it. And we're going to need you to demonstrate a little decorum. Got it? This week, economists confirm that the booming tear gas industry continues to lead the world's economic recovery. Financial experts confirm that the growing demand for tear gas in countries like Turkey, Brazil, and Greece has increased over 20% annually over the past few years and is anticipated to continue playing a major role in the world economy. The market for tear gas just keeps sustaining itself and growing. We can only hope that more people demand tear gas in the coming months and the recovery will be here sooner than we thought. In other news, a community is devastated by the sight of an old man struggling up some steps. A stack of unused CDRs turns five years old and this zoo is really promoting the hell out of their new fruit bat. Your diligence and patience have been noted. Prove yourself further at theonion.com. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind. Just dial in toll-free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com. Enjoy the features that we share with you over at uh, freetalklive.com. Those other talk show hosts, they want to charge you for accessing their website. Ours is free, so enjoy it. And you can connect with us on Skype, by the way. Our Skype username here is lrn.fm. Just send to us uh, you know, a contact request. You have to send a request first. It will be approved, and we will then be able to get you on the air after that. So once it's approved, you can then call in about whatever happens to be on your mind. Tonight, it is Ian in the studio with you, bringing you special guest host, Rich Paul. Welcome back to the show, Rich. Thanks, Ian. Good to have you here. And, of course, Mark Edge with me, as always. Indeed. Except for last night when you were doing a fireman's thing. Yes. In, yes. So uh, we can, uh, can, of course, take your calls about absolutely anything. There's interesting news uh, out there, including the WikiLeaks story that I teased last night. I don't know if they've actually released the information that they had teased that they were going to release. They said they're going to release it in within 72 hours, and this was a day or so ago. And it was, uh, according to Glenn Greenwald, information that could lead to deaths. So we'll give you an update on WikiLeaks here in a little bit. First, we go to the phones to Skype. Makona is on the line on Skype. Hello, Makona. Um, hello. Hi. Um, You're on thank the air. you, Hassan. That's my real name. And um, I'd like to call, um, I mean, I'd like to talk about the internet fast lane rules that the FCC is attempting to implement. Sure. And also comment on a few of the net neutrality statements made a few days ago. By all means. Okay. So, first of all, um, basically, the FCC is attempting to implement a so-called internet fast lane, which is part of their new net neutrality rules, which would make it so that it would legitimize a business practice that's extremely consumer unfriendly, where in which ISPs can essentially not offer users the speed they're paying for and instead only offer it for a select set of services. For example, like, Imagine if you have a three-lane highway and there are so many cars on the road that traffic is moving extremely slowly. Mm -hmm. What the internet fast lane does is it essentially closes off one of the lanes, forces everybody to the two lanes, making them much slower, yep. and then offering that third lane to only the rich people who can afford the toll. Right. And it well, will basically... I'm, I'm sorry, go on. And basically what it will cause is it will create a business practice where ISPs will be encouraged to force as many service providers on the fast lane as possible by letting the letting their connection saturate or even letting the network degrade by not repairing switches as they break or any other maintenance, general maintenance, just thus allowing the network to slow down and create an artificial scarcity of bandwidth in order to encourage people to pay more for the fast lane. Well, and 
I'm, uh, let me break in here. I guess my view of it, and and I'm pretty well acquainted with how the how the internet works. Um, being a retired computer programmer, um, you know there are already multiple grades of service internet service available. You know you can buy dial up. You can buy a 300 baud modem if you want to, which is what I started out with. You can you can connect to a dial-up ISP. You can get uh, DSL, which is faster than that. You can get cable modem, which is faster than that. So already people choose to pay more or less money for their internet connectivity depending on how fast they want stuff to come to them. Um, there is a possibility, and certainly any in a if consider a, a free society with no regulation at all, an ISP would be perfectly free to say we won't carry any content from Google.com because we don't like the guy who owns Google.com. They could say that, but then their customers could say, "Well, I use Google every day, so thanks very much, but I'm going to go to your competitor now." So there are market forces to prevent any kind of of abuse and the scarcity of bandwidth really is not artificial it costs money to carry data and somehow companies have to make that back and the um the the, the suggestion that the one lane of highway would be blocked off only for rich people is um on two points it's uh it's it's a fallacious um argument because it's not for rich people it's for people going to rich people's houses and secondly it sort of fetishizes that whole let's hate the rich people thing um and also, when when you say rich people, if I was a poor internet content developer, I might choose to allocate the money to get a faster connection, even though I'm not rich, because it's important to me to have fast net. But, you know, Chuck Walgreen, who's very rich, might never use the internet, and he might have a slower connection. So it's not a question of rich and poor. It's a question of willing or unwilling to pay for the service. Well, the other question is, should the government be getting involved here? Because the advocates of net neutrality are saying that, yes. But they are involved. Uh, should, the, should the government be changing the rules? Because they're involved. Okay. Well, I don't know what level of involvement government has with how fast things can go on the internet. I, I don't know much about that. It's not about, about how fast. It's allocation It's allocation of uh, bandwidth. You don't think that the government is actually removing a restriction at this point to allow wealthy um, web, web providers to uh, to get their traffic? And uh, how, what, govern, what restriction was removed by the government? I don't know the answer to that, okay. Ian, but I'm suspecting... My understanding of the whole net neutrality, and I can be totally wrong about this, my understanding of this whole net neutrality debate is that the idea of net neutrality has been put forth because someone has proposed that companies may do this. Maybe some companies are are doing it, but all I know is that the proposal is that some companies may decide to sell a faster tier of service to certain websites out there who want their content to have guaranteed delivery at a certain rate. And if that's actually happening, then you know the 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 proposal of the net neutrality advocates is to get the government involved to stop that from happening or to theoretically stop it from happening in the future to make the supposed even playing field where every service is given the same uh, level of quality of service on uh, online. It, it, the FCC, is that your yeah, they're talking about outlawing something that, you know, the practice of giving preferential uh, bandwidth, which nobody does. And nobody has done. They just think that somebody, someday somebody might, they might want do to it. do this. Well, so the FCC has floated, floated this. To. Okay, the, the FCC has floated this in the last week. When you say this, you mean... Okay, do you want to go look it up so I can read it for you? No, the fact wait, is, you mean? They, there are proposals on the table by the FCC, yeah. not lobbied for by any lawmaker that anybody voted for. Mm -hmm. Unelected bureaucrats that are changing some rules because they can, and that's what the caller's calling in about. Okay, but what's the proposal that you're I'll saying? I'll go and look okay, it up please. so I can read it for you. Great, thank you for that. So go ahead, uh, caller. What was your name again? I'm Hassan. Hassan. Go ahead with your thoughts. Yes, uh, because the issue is like the FCC is already involved in internet providers and the federal government is heavily involved including so state you think also. is that justification to have them force a so-called level playing field the net neutrality uh it's either they completely leave or they force a level playing field because with their involvement as it is now it's created monopolies already 
like for example i'm here in new york and my only isp option is either verizon dsl verizon fios or dial up what makes you believe that that's the fcc's fault typically those are local governments that uh, create those restrictions it would likely be your new york city government or whatever township or wherever you might be located Do you have any evidence it's that it's tell. actually the FCC doing that? Yes. Not really. But what evidence do you have, the Mark? Problem. What, that the FCC is the one changing the rules? No. Uh, you know, uh, Maybe you were researching on your laptop there. You weren't listening to uh, to Hassan here who said that he's upset because the FCC has made it so he can only choose between Verizon and dial-up in New York City. And I'm oh, saying that's, that's likely New York City that's doing that, yeah, that's not the Yeah, that's likely the municipality. Thank you, Hassan. I appreciate hearing from you at 855-450 free. So I'm not interested in having the FCC come in and mandate what companies can't do. I agree with they Rich. I think the market, mm -hmm. I think the market will solve this problem because people do not want slow internet. The customers are going to go where they can get the fastest speed. So this whole idea seems just ridiculous to me. But you can comment, share your thoughts here on Free Talk Live. Gold Bond presents Shaquille O'Neal. So I'm hanging out with my gold bond buddies, and they're like, Shaq, Shaq, great job with the gold bond powder spray. People love it. So I'm soaking in the good vibes, kicking off my shoes. Next thing I know, they're coming out with a new foot powder spray. Boom. Shaq strikes again. Gold Bond No Mess Powder Spray cools and refreshes your body, and new Gold Bond Foot Powder Spray has two times the odor-absorbing powders to do the same for your feet. Stay cool with Gold Bond. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like Toka Djembe drums for only 19 bucks, or Squire Stratocaster electric guitars for only 89 bucks, or a digital reference mic for just 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. Again, the Congressional Budget Office sounds the alarm, this time warns of Greek-style U.S. debt crises. You heard me right. The GAO is drawing a parallel between the U.S. economy, its debt, and the current Greek economic meltdown. With the debt-to-GDP chart climbing into unfamiliar territory, the growing budget deficit will rise to unsupportable levels. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. The Federal Debt and Risk of Financial Crises document the CBO has published is a must-read for every American, covering the risk of continued deficit spending coupled with an aging population and the rising interest rates spell economic disaster. It's imperative that you get a copy of this document and study it for yourself. Call me today at 800-686-2237, and I'll send you a free copy. Again, call 800-686-2237 and ask for your copy of the CBO document. Once again, you need to read this government report. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. People, they like to complain about the idea that the money is taxpayer dollars. It's not really true, is it? I mean, they were your dollars until you yeah. gave them to the government. Right. Now they're their dollars, <laughs> and they're going to do whatever the hell they damn well want to do with them. You're right. It is still your money in that if a thief comes and steals money from you... It doesn't cease to be yours just because yeah. they stole it. You still have a claim on that, but you don't have the ability to control the thief unless you actually have him in your custody. Mm. So that thief is going to go out and buy a big screen TV or do whatever, you know, spend it on coke and whores or whatever it is that thieves do uh, with the money that they steal. And you That's what the politicians really, do with it. Yeah, you, you know, you can call the thief on the phone and say, I told you not to spend that money on whores! <laughs> and he's going to say, well, thanks for the input. <laughs> yeah. I, Noted. I appreciate that. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Do you love coffee as much as I love coffee? Here's a delicious way to drink the best of the best coffee and make a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox Coffee. 
and you can try a pound for free. All you do is cover shipping. It's organic, shade-grown, top 1% Arabica grade, 10% of future purchases help our efforts to give the gift of human freedom through at least 100 microloans via World Vision. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves. Toll free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Net neutrality back on the table for discussion. Mark's done a little bit of research on the history of it, and Rich and I were both surprised. Uh, We, you know, as people who are somewhat, you know, paying attention to the Internet, Rich, you a former computer programmer, I'm a computer geek myself, uh, we hadn't heard that apparently the whole net neutrality thing was actually instituted by the FCC back in 2010. I don't even feel like we've been talking about it for that long. I remember we talked about it a couple years ago on Free Talk Live when it was really kind of bubbling up, but apparently something has happened with that in the past, and now the proposal is to repeal net neutrality, essentially. We can continue the discussion here in moments. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you have been paying close attention and you're just listening, saying to yourself, oh, you guys, you're, you're messing this up. You don't know what you're talking about. Call in. You're right. Us, call in. <laughs> let us know. 855-450-FREE. Or connect with us on Skype at username lrn.fm. You know, bitcoins are coming up in price, at least over the last few days. They're they're inching towards $500 a piece. They were down around 450 for a couple weeks there, it seemed like. And uh, there's been a rally of some sort, and Bitcoins are on the way up. And actually, Daryl was doing some uh, calculating today, because I had said on the air in the past that uh, that a Bitcoin is probably worth more than all of the other world currencies combined. Oh, that might be interesting. And yeah. he actually went and he ran the numbers. Now, he did not include gold and silver in this calculation. He just looked at government currencies out there, and he found that like the total amount... Uh, in U.S. dollars, of value of all of the world's currencies amounts to about 50 bucks. So really, Bitcoin is 10 times the value of all the world's currencies combined at the moment. Very exciting. I think that's per unit. I don't unit. think yeah. that's necessarily very meaningful. Yeah, but it, it is meaningful because Bitcoin started at zero and now it's at 500. That's meaningful. Oh, the delta is is meaningful, but it's like saying that you know, IBM's stock is uh, is at 500, and Microsoft's stock is at 250. Those don't quote me on those numbers are crap. But uh, and and saying, well, therefore Microsoft is is worth uh, more or less than IBM, and you have to multiply that by the number of uh, units out there to know the value. Right. Of of the company. Yeah, I'm just comparing That's one not a to perfect, one. Uh, I'm just analogy. comparing one to one in that. There was a time when Bitcoin was worth less than a U.S. dollar, and that time was a long time ago at this oh, point. Oh, no, a couple of years, a few yes. years ago. I In mean, Bitcoin time, that's a long time agreed. as far as I'm concerned. I, I, I'm with Rich on this one. Um, you know, it is mm-hmm. inconsequential as to what the unit is worth unless you compare what it was worth over time and, like, the you know, mm-hmm. the change has been big. I, I, think that's, I think that enters mm-hmm. the realm of a factoid. It's mildly interesting kind of trivia mm-hmm. that is of mm-hmm. no consequence. That then again, that there has been a multiple hundred percent increase in the value of Bitcoin compared to itself over time, that's incredibly significant. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a big deal. You know, it, it was a hundred dollars when I went to jail, and now it's worth five times that. So that's right. a huge difference. Cash into coins.com is the place to go get Bitcoins if you want to get them. Um, it's easy, safe, fast, completely legal, inexpensive. Customer service is their top priority. All you have to do is uh, send them a money order, a check, or a wire transfer. They've got great rates over there. In fact, you can uh, if you make an order under $40, there's no fee at all. So you can get into Bitcoins. That's what their goal is, is to get you into Bitcoins, try it out, see if you like it, cashintocoins.com. Okay, so we were talking about net neutrality. Mark, you did some digging on the history about it. it- I feel like we haven't been talking about it for four years, but maybe we have. Uh, Apparently, back in 2010, the FCC took uh, made a move on this. Yeah, um, May 15th, uh, they the Federal Communications just a few days ago, the Federal Communications Commission voted to move forward with their proposed rules for net neutrality. Whereas um, the in the history of the current uh, proposal goes back to 2010, when the FCC issued an open internet order 
creating some net neutrality rules which prohibited internet service providers from blocking content and prioritizing certain kinds of traffic. Okay. Consumer rights advocates criticized the rules as too weak because they did not cover mobile web providers. Telecommunications companies, though, countered that the rules were too strong. (laughs) Yeah. Currently, the internet service providers are legally classified as information services, and the law says that no discrimination or price regulations are necessary for consumer protection. That means the FCC has no authority to regulate those services, though the commission does have the indirect authority to regulate interstate and international communications after the FCC released its open internet order. So Verizon then filed a lawsuit against the FCC claiming that the commission did not have the authority to make those rules or enforce them over internet service providers like itself. In January of this year, the D.C. Court of Appeals agreed with Verizon and said the FCC can't stop internet service providers from blocking or discriminating against websites or other internet uh, traffic unless the internet is reclassified as a public utility. But the court also said the FCC does have some authority to implement net neutrality rules so far as it promotes broadband deployment across the country. So there you go. The FCC. So the court decided that the FCC could not interfere? Couldn't interfere, but unless it's a public utility, mm-hmm. but it can interfere. Um, it can uh, implement some rules as far as uh, promotion that uh, of the internet as broadband deployment across the the, the country. Uh huh. And uh, so now it, it, whatever FCC... it means to them. So it's legal now, crap. But now you said the FCC's made another decision, loosening to, up to loosen up. Well, they call they it net anything. neutrality, but this is just you don't listen to what they call their mm-hmm. rules. You got to read the rules. And oh, in this, I'm circ- get right on that. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Okay. Would you agree that they lie when they name their rules? Sure. Okay, great. Then then we're on the same page. Um, so this is what people are freaking out about. They're freaking out because now it could be possible for some companies somewhere. It's likely. To, I don't know how likely it is. I really don't. I mean, I, I know people are saying maybe it's happening already, and I don't, I don't realize it because, you know, they're not going to advertise this too publicly that they're doing it. But the idea being that if uh, YouTube pays the internet service provider a certain fee, that they would prioritize YouTube over, say, Netflix, uh, for instance. Or it might be vice versa because Netflix actually charges their customers for subscriptions. So let's say Netflix pays the uh, the fee. They would have guaranteed delivery, guaranteed bandwidth, that kind of thing, whereas YouTube would be stuck in the kind of the pipe with the rest of the, the internet. That's my understanding of, uh, although some have said that they might actually throttle the other services, which, again, companies that are throttling are not going to be very, very popular with their customers. Well, they'll be unpopular with the companies, with the with the, the users of the websites that they throttle, yeah, exactly. but it, may, make the, it might make them more popular with the, the users of the websites that they don't throttle because the neighbors are throttled. So it's a different way of sharing... Uh, sharing ISPs where maybe your ISP choice will include what websites do you go go to most. I don't know Seems if that ridiculous. would be. Well, I, I don't know that that would be useful, but it could develop that way. And if it does, yeah, so be it. I mean, that's consider what the for wants. a second that if they do get to pay, um, like okay, so some major companies uh, pay. I don't know, um, to, to deliver internet, to, to be faster on the internet. Well, consider that that relieves pressure on internet service providers, whether mobile or um, static, to some extent, because they're getting money in on both sides. When, they, when the pressure is relieved, they can do things with that money. Because remember, they're in competition serving, you know, to serve their customers. So they're either going to have to provide better service or they're going to have to provide lower prices against their competition, which is to say it could very well come to a situation where half the Internet's free. Google, um, Facebook and all this stuff are free and then you pay to be able to reach the other lower tiers. They're not talking about charging customers. They're talking about charging Ian, the. It's uh, like you didn't listen to a thing I said. There's more coming up here in moments. You can take control on Free Talk Live. Springtime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long term customers know spring is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for spring specials, including our 500 parts per million colloidal silver, all sizes on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, Hootia and Metabolic Complex, and ProMetabolic, all on sale now. Also, the Anti-Parasite Intestinal Freedom and Warwood Plus Complex. 
plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for spring at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to herbalhealer.com and click on spring specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education since 1988. Herbal Healer Academy. My name is Angel Rach. I'm a mother of two teenage children, and I fought all the way to the Supreme Court for the right to use the medicine that saved my life. I've been permanently disabled for 10 years with an inoperable brain tumor, wasting syndrome, and several other serious conditions. For four years, I was in a wheelchair in so much pain, I couldn't even hug my kids. The hardest part was looking in their eyes and seeing how much they were suffering because of my medical condition. The medicine that gave me my life back and gave my kids their mom back was cannabis, also known as medical marijuana. With medical marijuana, I can walk, maintain my weight, and I can be a mom. Without it, my doctors believe that I would die. To learn more about medical marijuana, contact Marijuana Policy Project at 1-877-JOIN-MPP or on the web at mpp.org. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone-proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial. 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever's on your mind toll-free here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733, and you can join us online over at freetalklive.com. Enjoy all those features that you find on the site there. We give them to you. You can get interactive in a variety of different ways at freetalklive.com, including our bulletin board system and more over again at freetalklive.com. Dot com. Pro XPN is your global virtual private network that encrypts your online data, meaning that before it reaches your internet service provider, whatever it is you're doing online is encrypted, meaning your ISP can no longer know what you're up to online. They can't keep records anymore, which is likely what they're doing right now. They're likely recording every website you visit and every search term that you enter. 
for as up to five years in some cases, which, of course, makes it very easy for governmental agencies to get access to and, of course, easy for your ISP to mine for data and uh, sell your information. So you can stop that from happening by going to proxpn.com slash FTL. Download the software for your favorite operating system, Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, Android devices, Linux. There's a bit of a different setup for Linux users, but it is possible to do it on Linux, and it's actually pretty simple. Just contact their uh, support department there. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Use code FTL20 and you'll save 20% off the price of their premium account, which gives you unlimited bandwidth, servers around the world that you can connect to, as well as the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. ProXPN.com slash FTL. There's no records being kept by ProXPN of your online habits, and you get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee. ProXPN.com slash FTL, promo code FTL20. That sh uh, saves you 20% for the lifetime of your account. Breaks the price down to 5 bucks a month. When you buy the annual plan, you can save even more by buying the annual plan with Bitcoin as well. So, proxpn.com slash FTL. So, Mark, you yelled at me for not paying attention to you uh, in the last segment, and it's true. I didn't really understand uh, what you were saying towards the end there. It sounded to me like you were saying that people would... Uh, get internet for free from some websites, but then other sites would be for pay, and that that's just kind of what I'm saying. Seemed uh, seemed unbelievable to me that something like that would happen. Why would that be? Now listen for a second. Google is paying money to put out fiber on the internet. I think it's in Kansas City. Mm -hmm. There um, and there uh, other places. Now I'm sure they're charging people for this fiber. Fiber. But it shows that they want to get to people so badly. Consider that Google, Yahoo, and a variety of sites give you free internet. Sites give you, a, I mean, Facebook gives you a free social profile. Mm -hmm. None of these things are free. They're they mining your data. They're mining your data. They cannot mine your data if you are not on the internet. Correct? Correct. Now, when you and I talk and you're a big multinational internet company who wishes to mine my data, and I'm me... One of us pays for the to talk to the other one. Mm -hmm. I pay to talk to you, Gmail or Google yeah. or whatever. Why am I paying? Because of the FCC's rule that says that I have to pay. That you are an information you are part of an information service known as the internet, and that I have to pay for this information service. Whereas under the uh, the the new rules, perhaps what will happen is that. Some companies, large companies, ones that come to mind are uh, YouTube, Google, F uh, Facebook. Uh, I guess there's, I repeat myself to, to some extent, but the larger um, websites, they're going to possibly, likely pay for faster, better service than other websites get. But that faster, better service may come at a lower rate. It may be that the ISPs are um, the, the money that the these other companies pay offsets what it pays for me that I get the I get the 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 corporate web yeah. website um, internet for free I don't see that happening and there are some technical reasons why I don't think that's likely and rich you can you know yeah. back me up on this or not but uh, you know for instance if you are connecting to say pro XPN then your internet service provider won't know what website you're visiting and then you know you how would they divvy up what sites you get to access versus which you don't and beyond that if and what's their incentive by the way to hook up internet service to you and give you technical support if you're not paying them for it that doesn't make any sense either because you may not do this all the time but you know they've got people calling them all the time saying my internet's out and it costs money to give those people service so when they pay 50 bucks a month or whatever it helps cover those costs all right. I just don't see. Uh, I just don't see this happening. How about a lower tier? And the big, they the have other lower thing tiers. is, you can buy it's less already bandwidth. possible for a website. I mean, I've run a lot of websites for companies, and yes, some of them have had fatter pipes than the others. So there's already a difference, also at the website provider's location. And some people do things that are very, uh, that are very uh, complex to do it. They'll have direct connections to some of the major ISPs that their customers use so that they can get their stuff first, or they'll have co-located co servers with some ISPs so that those ISPs' customers can get very fast 
uh, direction to their data. So this is all going on. Co- content delivery networks, of course, have servers in different parts of the world. So that way, when you request a video or whatever it is you're mm. requesting, they will determine how to send that content to you based on your location and say, oh, well, this content should come. You're in the Netherlands. This content should come from our European server rather than mm. sending it to you from across the world. So there One are One thing we know for certain is that business, that, bi- that business always changes. Nothing remains the same. Yeah, that's true. Um, um, we can say that cell phone companies five years ago, ten years ago, un, uh, the unlimited plans, largely unheard of. Now, um, y- you have all kinds of companies offering these unlimited plans for $40, $50 a month. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you might have been made the speculation, I don't see that business model changing at any point. But when something changes in business, something changes in business. Yeah. So when these big companies start paying for larger if they start paying for you know better uh, priority on the bandwidth then that's going to change things for internet service providers it internet service could. providers do want you hooked up to the internet it's not that they don't want you hooked up to the internet now maybe they'll maybe they'll be able to offer a different tier of the internet that only has google and facebook or mm-hmm. whatever um in which case They'll they'll make that cheaper for you. Hey, you don't want to go look at the other sites? No problem. We'll just get Google and Facebook for you because they're I paying to be they there. Could. And we'll do that for ten dollars a month, promotional mm-hmm. for the first three months. Yeah. After that, we jack it up to three hundred and fifty dollars a month, unless you come in and call up and change your plan or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. You know how they do it? They're a bunch of liars and thieves. Uh, well, you can do that, but I don't think you're going to keep your customers very long. Well, talk to Dish and yeah. DirecTV. I mean, the biggest <laughs> thing to solve the problem, from my point of view, is deregulate who can provide uh, internet service directly to homes, so that there's as much contra- uh, there's as much competition as possible. And mm-hmm. then, if you decide that your that your internet service isn't good, change providers. And, yeah, I totally agree. You know, nobody, the only point I'm trying to make is I nobody wanna, ever buys what they don't prefer. I want to see competition in the area of internet service. Mm-hmm. But what We've I want to no, we don't. Ian, sure, we do. You, there right are all here kinds Keen, of rules. You've got right here in Keene. You've got uh, DSL and you've got cable. You've also got the new Fast Roads in New Hampshire, which is bringing in fiber as well. So you've got multiple players. You also have the 4G providers on cell phones. You've got Verizon. You've got U.S. Cellular. So there are at least four or five different broadband providers right here in Little Keene, New Hampshire. And from what I understand of uh, from what the uh, from from what the city claims is that they're not limiting anything. If somebody else wanted to come in and create another internet provider here in Keene, if they thought there was the market potential for it, there probably isn't, but if they thought there was enough that they could outcompete these other players, then they wouldn't be prohibited from doing that here. That's I'm not, not every the same as New York City. Every phone company is also an ISP. That's what you I'm saying. Get, this 4G. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I said 4G. There's yeah, uh, said Verizon, 4G. US Cellular. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about internet as it exists today. You are sitting on a small continuum in a 3D world when I'm talking about a 4D world. Okay, what are you, you talking about? You don't know what internet's going to look like in five years. Of course not. You've got no clue what an open market in internet looks like because you've never had one. In and that therefore, open... you should not pass any rules that will be in effect for more than five that years because you, shouldn't you don't pass know what's going to happen. No, there shouldn't be exactly. any rules. I agree completely. Uh, 855, 450 free. As far as, I, as far as I know, there's nothing preventing you from setting up your own ISP, Mark. If you have the money, you can That's do it. That's not what More I'm talking up. about. Right, well, then may explain it coming up. Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF+, Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now. 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, Call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. 
Imagine an acne treatment breakthrough that even Proactive says is better than Proactive. Announcing all new Proactive Plus, the revolutionary new way to clear your skin from the number one name in acne care. Proactive Plus is our best, most effective solution ever. And when you call 1-800-255 today, you can have it tomorrow. Proactive Plus is the modern acne miracle that treats your skin beautifully. The plus means more. More precise, targeted medicine for faster, gentler acne prevention. And more skin-loving solutions so your complexion can look bright and beautiful. I am just so happy with Proactive Plus. I don't think my skin has ever looked this good. Call 1-800-721-4255. Be one of the first to try Proactive Plus. Guaranteed 100% risk-free. You won't see this limited-time offer on TV. It's a radio exclusive. 1-800-721-4255. 1-800-721-4255. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at FPP.cc, as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at FPPradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at FPP.cc. That's FPP.cc, as in Creative Commons. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and it's kind of been tech hour here so far. You can bring up anything that you want, by the way. The toll-free number is 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. We've got a website. It is freetalklive.com. Drop by there. Enjoy all the features that we share with you. Those other talk show hosts charge you for access to their websites, and ours is free. Uh, So you'll probably find you get more for free at freetalklive.com than you do When you pay for those other sites, go and check it out for yourself, freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live is brought to you by Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. He is coming back. I've got the the date, the estimated date of arrival for Derek J. Freeman. He is about to end his two-year self-imposed exile from the Shire. He will be back with us here in beautiful Keene, New Hampshire this Saturday. So I'm very excited about that. Oh, yeah, he's been missed. Very excited to get him back on the air here at Free Talk Live. I haven't invited him to come back personally yet, but that's one of the first things I plan to do when he comes back. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm sure there will be a party here for him at, uh, at some point because uh, Derek J is a great activist. And, Rich, you and I were talking off the air today about how many people Derek and his activism have inspired to move here to New Hampshire, that there's a group of guys out in Manchester uh, a couple of them are bloggers over at freekeen.com. Riaz, uh, not Riaz, uh, Joel, as well as Robert Matthias or Matthias. 
Mm -hmm. They are two of the doers in Riaz as well. These are three like key doers in the Manchester area. They're generating media. They're mm -hmm. getting out there. They're doing activism and doing jury outreach activism, which hasn't been done in Manchester for years that I, that I know of mm -hmm. on any sign of, in any kind of consistent basis. So they've really kicked, I think, activism into gear up there, at least in a visible way. I know there's stuff mm -hmm. that happens in Manchester, but it seems like they try to keep a lid on it all. So these guys are actually reporting mm -hmm. on what's happening, and it's very exciting. And they cite Derek J. Freeman as their inspiration for moving to New Hampshire. Yeah, and that's something that uh, people forget when they think about keen activism. They think about, you know, is it effective in, in convincing people in keen that we're right about things? And that is one question to ask. But another question is, are libertarians outside the state catching the stuff on the news and deciding to move to New Hampshire? Mm -hmm. And that was a big part of the audience that that I was looking for with the 420 rally. A lot of that was directed at out-of-state libertarians, and I wanted to show them 100 people protesting on the square, you know, and that helped. <laughs> It sure does. You can see some of that uh, by going to victimlesscrimespree.com, where Derek J., we've got a full feature-length documentary film about his year of arrests for vict various different ridiculous victimless crimes. And <clears throat> I highly recommend it. It's free. Go watch it at victimlesscrimespree.com and then share it with your friends because, again, it's free. So enjoy. Uh, mm -hmm. All right, 855-450 free. Let's go to the phones here. We've been talking about net neutrality. We've got Ty on the line here uh, via Skype. Hello, Ty in Tennessee. Hey, good evening. I wanted hey. to uh, make a couple of points on this net net neutrality subject. Um, I think maybe this may be where Mark's trying to come from, Ian, as, as far as the competition. There really can't be fair competition in technology services when those technologies are so highly regulated. You know, the entry costs are sky high mm -hmm. to be a provider of information delivery services. So there may be quite a few people in competition out there, but there's no telling how competitive it would be if there was not if there was not such a uh, uh, network of regulations. Well, I agree. I think that there shouldn't be any uh, regulations, and I fully support a free market in competition. And I don't know what it's like to try to start an internet service provider these days. I would imagine that. If you can acquire, because uh, I know that when I where I was from in Florida, there was a Wi-Fi provider that was coming out where they were transmitting uh, wireless internet to different homes. You'd have to get a receiver and you know mount it up on a chimney stack or something like that. And I just kind of got the impression that they were a small you know mom and pop business. They didn't they were not a big player like a Time Warner or a Verizon or anything like that. So I kind of felt like, well, you know, if a, if a mom and pop business like this can start up and, and share a Wi-Fi connection with people, then, you know, it is possible. It seemed like it was possible. And now this was several years ago, so maybe it's become more difficult. But, you know, I'd be in, more interested in hearing from somebody in the IT field who can really mm -hmm. comment to this. You know, is it is it really that hard to start an ISP or is it just a matter of acquiring a, a big fat Internet connection at a certain location and then figuring out how to, to share that out and charge customers to mm -hmm. access it? A dial-up well, uh, ISP is uh, pretty easy, but you know if you want to start providing cable service, you're going to have to run your own cable. To well, do right it. there, you're dealing with local governments and regulations that they're going to put in your way. That seems to be to be the the primary barrier to entry here is dealing with local governments, not so mm -hmm. much the FCC. Uh, but again, I'd, I'd be more interested in hearing from somebody who actually has tried to start an internet service provider up, somebody who yeah. does know, you know, exactly what it's like and how difficult or 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 simple it is. Yeah, and the other the other thing I wanted to bring up is usually the name of a law on the federal level tells us what it will not do. Yeah, it's the opposite. So, mm. yeah, proponents are giving the government the power to create problems in order to solve a potential problem. I mean, does anybody have any proof of actual wrongdoing, damages, breach of contract? You know, if there was, then these people could seek remedy through arbitration, correct? Mm -hmm. So I don't see any evidence of actual wrongdoing. So it sounds like uh, just a big government power grab to try to get more regulatory power over technology. I see it as a solution looking for a problem. Exactly. So, That's exactly right. So you would support, though, that if the FCC had, as Mark was saying, in 2010, created some new net neutrality rules to repeal those, which is kind of the proposal on the table, right? 
Well, I would say get rid of the FCC. Well, yes, but they're not going to propose that. (laughs) So in reality, uh, you know, to remove the current rules would be the right way to go, would it not? Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying giving the government more regulatory power is a big mistake. They are not going to uh, solve any problems that exist. They are going to create unseen problems. We don't even have an idea what they are yet. So true, Ty. Thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. So, uh, you know, I mentioned last night the WikiLeaks story. And since we're talking tech, we're talking internet, this seems like an appropriate place for it. RT.com reporting, despite warnings that doing so could lead to increased violence and potential deaths, Anti-secrecy group WikiLeaks says it plans to publish the name of a country targeted by massive U.S. surveillance operation. Yeah, I thought this was interesting. I mean, it's like, now guess the country. On Monday this week, journalists at The Intercept published a report based off of leaked U.S. NSA documents supplied by Edward Snowden, which suggested that the NSA had been collecting in the bulk, in bulk the contents of all phone conversations made or received in two countries abroad. Only one of those nations, however, the Bahamas, was named by The Intercept. The other, journalists Ryan Devereaux, Glenn Greenwald, and Laura Poitras wrote this week, was withheld as a result of, quote, credible concerns that doing so could lead to increased violence, unquote. WikiLeaks has since accused The Intercept and its parent company, First Look Media, of censorship and says they will publish the identity of the country if the name remains redacted in the original article. So again, The Intercept is Glenn Greenwald's thing. Remember, he left The Guardian, I think it was sometime in 2013, toward the end of 2013. He said he was going to be starting his own thing, and he launched this Intercept website. So apparently WikiLeaks is upset about The Intercept not going ahead and publishing the information that they had given them. Now, that's not censorship, technically. Uh, It's only censorship when a government refuses to publish something, right? Well, even more, censorship is forcibly preventing somebody from publishing. It's not saying, I'm not interested in this. I don't want to. To some extent, I, you know, okay. I, I guess I'm a I'm a little jaded, but I, I'm not. I would not be surprised if Glenn Greenwald was timing the release of these things mm-hmm. in order to best benefit Glenn Greenwald. Okay. Now, in the process of benefit, now look, I don't have a problem with that. Um, in the process of benefiting Glenn Greenwald, he has released a lot of good information um, that we are able to use, and I think that he's sort of been able to catch the NSA and the U.S. government and governments around the world lying with their pants on fire mm-hmm. um, on uh, more than one occasion. And I like that because it shows people who are at least paying attention that – Politicians, government bureaucrats, these uh, government agencies, the people that uh, occupy these organizations are big fat liars who do not think you need to know the truth. In a democracy where you're supposed to – in a democratic republic where you are supposed to pick your rulers, you don't need to know the truth, which is – Proof positive we don't live in a democratic republic. If they're controlling the information flow to you and you don't have the information to be able to make a good decision, then you're not making a decision at all. We'll come back with more on the Greenwald slash WikiLeaks controversy. They had been allies in the past, now at odds. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. And we see we still are waiting on WikiLeaks to publish the information, as I understand it. That has not yet happened. Uh, toll free number 855 450 free. Plus, you can take control of the airwaves. Michelle Malkin on pot. We'll talk about it. This is the Central Scrutinizer. I steal your labor by force through taxation. My job is to spy on you and keep you from hearing things like the Freedom Fiends. I especially do not want you to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to keep them drone proof. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Do not go to freedomfiends.com and click on the torrent link and learn how to torrent Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. 
Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. There's a treasure hunt going on at mathgate.info, a Bitcoin treasure hunt. You can find Bitcoins by proving theorems. So learn some logic, do some math, find some Bitcoins. Even better, mathgate.info is designed to be used anonymously. So connect to mathgate.info through Tor, prove some theorems, find some anonymous Bitcoins. Don't wait. Others are already searching for the Bitcoins. Go to mathgate.info today and join the treasure hunt. There are anonymous Bitcoins to be had for the taking at mathgate.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.34 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,290 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $492. Antiwar.com reports, Reports from multiple administration officials say that the Justice Department will not reveal a court ruling ordering the release of a redacted version of the notorious Barron Memo under the Freedom of Information Act. The courts ordered the memo released in April, saying President Obama's repeated bragging about the drone killings waived any right to secrecy for the memo, which provides the punitive legal justification for the president unilaterally assassinating American citizens overseas. The administration gave some access to the memo to members of Congress earlier this month in an effort to rescue the stalled judicial nomination of David Barron, the main author of the memo. The public still has not been allowed to see anything however, beyond President Obama's own repeated claims that the killings are totally on the up and up. Officials say the redaction could take quite some time and that there is no timeline for actually releasing the memo, just a general sense that the Justice Department intends to do so at some point. You can support FPP Radio by joining the FANS program. FANS are friends, allies, and numerary supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the Fans program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports Pennsylvania's ban on same-sex marriage was struck down by a federal judge on Tuesday in the latest court decision in the United States confirming gay couples' rights to marry. Finding Pennsylvania's 1996 Defense of Marriage Act unconstitutional, U.S. District Court Judge John Jones III wrote, By virtue of this ruling, same-sex couples who seek to marry in Pennsylvania may do so, and already married same-sex couples will be recognized as such in the Commonwealth. The ruling makes Pennsylvania the 19th U.S. state where gay marriage is allowed, a movement that has gained momentum since the Supreme Court ruled last June that legally married same-sex couples are eligible for federal benefits. Most recent court rulings allowing gay marriage have included a stay pending appeal, but Jones's ruling did not. There is, however, a three-day waiting period for all weddings in Pennsylvania. The judge noted the issue of gay marriage is a divisive one, and that makes some people deeply uncomfortable. He also compared Pennsylvania's ban on same-sex marriage to school segregation laws overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in 1954 of Brown v. Board of Education. Education. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. NPR reports, 
Despite Thailand's declaration of martial law and what the army said was an effort to end political unrest, most Thais were going about life as normal. In many ways, it's business as usual for the country of 67 million, where the military has been in power at least as often as the elected politicians. The familiarity of the events led to some interesting scenes with people taking selfies with soldiers on the streets of Bangkok on Tuesday. Most of the population remembers the 2006 coup d'etat that drove out Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, and many recall multiple times that the army moved out of the barracks and onto the streets. In all, there have been 11 successful coups since 1932, and another handful that have failed. This time, though, Army General Prayuth Chanocha insists what's happening is not a coup, but just a way to restore peace and order for people from all sides. He said martial law would continue until the country is safe and there is stability. One government aide called the army's move half a coup d'etat. Pavan Chacha Valpumkin, associate professor at the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at Kyoto University, is quoted by Time as saying, I think you can call this a coup because this is about taking away power from the people, taking control of the political situation and human rights. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Delighted health insurance executives gather in an outdoor coliseum to watch a patient battle cancer. And a self-conscious flasher is fully clothed under his trench coat. This is the Onion Week in Review. While stressing that they would absolutely never consider doing anything of the sort, German leaders quietly admitted this week that they were pretty sure they could carry out another Holocaust if they ever truly wanted to. Quickly noting that the Holocaust was an atrocity that should never be repeated, no matter how easy it would be to do so, almost all members of the German parliament discreetly conceded that with their country's dominance of Eurozone GDP, pulling off the unthinkable genocide would not be the least bit difficult. I'm just saying, hypothetically, that we very easily could do it. I mean, we definitely have the infrastructure, and the concentration camps are still standing. In other news, a so-called Christian has an erection. A new study finds more children are growing up in single-parent households, and a real-life Nancy Drew traces the source of her HPV. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can bring up what you want here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And with you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. And you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Join us on Skype as well. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Connect with us that way. If you want to sound really great on the air, typically uh, Skype calls are almost always better than a standard phone call. So, uh, in the last hour, for those of you just tuning in, we brought you the news about WikiLeaks. Apparently, they are now at odds with Glenn Greenwald. Uh, previously, Glenn Greenwald had been seemed like a friend uh, to some extent of WikiLeaks, and now WikiLeaks is upset, or at least someone at WikiLeaks, someone speaking for WikiLeaks, is upset about Glenn Greenwald's site, The Intercept, refusing to publish the full information as leaked to them by WikiLeaks. So what happened is the news has come out that the NSA has been collecting all of the phone calls, bulk contents of all phone conversations made or received in two countries abroad. One of them is the Bahamas. The other was not named by The Intercept, and that's what WikiLeaks is upset about. They are saying that they will publish the identity of the other country if the name continues to uh, remain redacted in The Intercept's original article. Intercept editors are claiming they withheld the information because of what they claim are credible concerns that revealing the info could lead could lead to uh, increased violence. Rich is uh, new in the studio here. We apologize for the cough. <laughs> um, anyway, the story here from uh, WikiLeaks is that the Greenwald fires back over Twitter, saying his outlet chose to publish more details than did the Washington Post, where journalists previously reported on a related call collection program, but chose to redact more thoroughly. WikiLeaks tweeted on Monday, quote, We condemn First Look for following the Washington Post into censoring the mass interception of an entire nation. 
It is not the place of first look. This is the company behind Intercept, which is Glenn Greenwald's pu uh, publication, or the Washington Post to deny the rights of an entire people to know they are being mass recorded, said WikiLeaks. It is not the place of first look or Washington Post to decide how a people will choose to act against mass breaches of their rights by the United States, unquote. Now, when Greenwald defended his decision to publish the names of four countries where telephony metadata is collected by the NSA, but withhold a fifth where content is recorded as well, WikiLeaks said it could be interpreted as meaning that the unknown country doesn't deserve to know that they're being surveilled. But Greenwald said The Intercept was very convinced it could lead to deaths. Later, WikiLeaks equated this as an act of racism. Oh. Uh Okay, I I have to say that WikiLeaks is is wrong. Yes, every publisher has a right to choose what they do and do not publish. You have a right to go around them and publish it yourself, which is what but you saying. don't have a right to force them to publish it. So to say that that they have no right, of course they have the right not to publish whatever they choose not to publish. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I think WikiLeaks is being uh, a little bit hyperbolic on this one. But as the conversation escalated... But WikiLeaks, is, uh, I mean, that, that's their whole thing, though, is we publish this stuff. Yeah. And they gave it to Glenn Greenwald's um, The Intercept in with the intention of seeing it published, and it hasn't been published. That's right. And all they're claiming is is that, look, you're going to publish this, or we're going to publish this, right? right? That's well, what they're if saying. they email it to me, I will post it to Facebook. <laughs> right. And Rich says he'll publish it. <laughs> I will publish it. <laughs> the WikiLeaks Twitter account uh, announced that it would disclose the nation's identity if The Intercept did not, despite requests from the U.S. government to leave the information redacted over fears of what the response could be. WikiLeaks asked, when has true published information harmed innocence? To repeat this false Pentagon talking point is to hurt all publishers. We will reveal the name of the censored country whose population is being mass recorded in 72 hours. They wrote this at 6.35 in the, uh, the evening Eastern Time, Tuesday evening. So it's been just over 24 hours at this point. Uh, I guess we should expect a publication Friday night. So by Friday night show, mm -hmm. this information should be out. If the organization intends to uphold that promise, the identity would be revealed before the weekend. As RT reported earlier this week, the Intercept story made claims the NSA has used a program codenamed MYSTIC, all in capital letters, to collect basic phone records in at least five countries, similar to the metadata that has been controversially collected in bulk, domestic, in bulk domestically, as revealed in one of the first documents released by uh, leaker Edward Snowden last year in the Bahamas, and one more locale, however, The Intercept reported that the NSA documents reveal another program codenamed so Somalget, either that or Somalget, is, disploy, uh, is all also in caps, is deployed in order to process over 100 million call events per day. Somalget, the document reads, is a, quote, program for embedded collection systems overtly installed on target networks, predominantly for the collection and processing of wireless slash mobile communications networks. According to The Intercept, the decision to wiretap all calls in and out of the Bahamas was made unilaterally and without the knowledge of the island's government or its quarter of a million people. So, we wait. Wow. And we'll discover probably before the weekend, what the mystery country is. What is the other country in the world that has been having all of its phone calls intercepted and recorded by the NSA, likely without the consent of anyone in that landmass? Well, if they think it's, more, somebody's going to be killed. Yeah, I mean, more interesting to me is what country, if named would actually start killing people or or very interesting it it seems like a very strange thing that just naming the company the, the country. country and not naming individual operatives could get people killed yeah who but would not be knowing killed? the situation i can't say it's i mean false. maybe there's somebody maybe may, I, I wonder who it would be that would be facing the death here in this case or the deaths would it be the mm -hmm. people that work for the tele telecommunications providers there are they are there certain technicians who the nsa has con has contacted to make the somehow the nsa had to put their tentacles in right like Hmm. Would they be able to do that without the assistance of some technicians there on the ground in whatever country that was? And in which case, would those hmm. people be the ones who possibly might face a death penalty? I, I want to say China. It could be that there are people getting paid to make sure that this doesn't happen and that they would be the ones who would be killed. Maybe maybe somebody's getting they paid failed. to look the other way yeah, as this is saying. coming. Either, either they failed or they sold out. That's 
a possibility. What did you say about China, Mark? I want to say it's China. No way. Too many phones. I mean, I just don't believe that. That seems well, unbelievable it's too big. to me. Seems too big. I don't know. There's a lot of people, but how many cell phones are there in China? And they make their own equipment in a lot of cases, their own um, routers and that sort of thing. So the how Chinese, could, you mean? Yeah, the Chinese. They're they're manufacturing a lot. So how could the United States control what goes in and what goes out of there? Okay. All right. I'll take my well, second if choice. Pilot, if they're pirating the IP, uh, they would end up with the same backdoors that the original authors wrote. Okay. And they wouldn't know it or know how to fix it. All right. I'll take my second choice. Egypt. Why? Because they're executing, uh, they're they're, thre- they're they're handing out executions to everybody anyway, so you know, might as well. Well, yeah, and it would make some level of sense, right, with all the upheaval and the politics and the the, the, the different protests and things like that going on over there. Maybe. I'm just yeah, I mean, if they're if they're tapping all the phone calls like they are in the Bahamas, I guess my guess would be would have to be Syria. So your um, thoughts are certainly welcome here at eight fifty five four fifty free. It's all up for speculation at the moment. We'll know more, and we'll certainly let you know when we find out more here on Free Talk Live. You know, I don't really know much about Michelle Malkin other than the fact that she's some sort of conservative talking head. She's one of these people. She's relatively well-known in the conservative movement or whatever you want to call it. She is uh, like Ann Coulter, I guess, just somebody who appears on talk shows she writes books from a conservative perspective. Well, according to the cannabis.co, she's also a marijuana advocate. And this is an interesting story because it kind of outlines her transition and how she came on board with the marijuana legalization movement, which I was kind of shocked to find out because she's always seemed to me, you know, again, I have limited uh, knowledge about her, but in what I had understood about her, she just always seemed to be just kind of your typical right winger. It's always interesting to see the right wingers, uh, you know, um, come on board on this particular issue. Yeah. So I've got the story here. We can share that with you. You can also share with us your thoughts, maybe on WikiLeaks or whatever happens to be on your mind here on Free Talk Live. The toll free number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. You may also connect with us via Skype. Send a contact request first to username lrn.fm. And once you're accepted, it'll be easy for you to get on Skype with us from that point. Forward. More free talk live coming up here in moments at 855 for 50 free. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leading them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of 
where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on doing the Free State Project and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Have you ever wanted to move to the land of Libpair, Libertarian Paradise, where there's fun for everyone that doesn't initiate force on others, fun for the kids, parties for the adults, buy and sell in silver or Bitcoin, scenic hikes and gun shoots, speeches to educate us all? The Porcupine Freedom Festival is Libpair in the White Mountains of New Hampshire for a week this summer, June 22nd to 29th. Get your tickets now before there's no more room. Porkfest, the event of a lifetime. Porkfest.com. That's P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T dot com. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves here toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop on by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you. They are all for free. And you also need to know how to get some really great coffee, and Mark can tell you. Yeah, you can go get some BuzzBox coffee at coffee.freetalklive.com. And, you know... Buzzbox coffee is organic, 100% organic, and it's uh, top 1% grade Arabica beans. And uh, one thing that I found out today is uh, I was looking at shade-grown coffee. Buzzbox is shade-grown. And besides shade-grown not giving that sort of acid reflux thing the way Robusto, sun-grown uh, Robusto beans um, can, can do for coffee, uh, the shade-grown coffee is where a lot of North American songbirds go for the winter. Oh, they, somebody called about that last night. They wanted to tell you something about that. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I saw a study. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they, they showed me, and I was really, really surprised. So if you're into the songbirds, you like songbirds, you want songbirds. And, you know, they call a cardinal a songbird, but have you ever heard a cardinal's song? Nope. It just goes beep, beep, beep. It's not a song. Sounds like electronic music. It's beautiful, but, I mean, the Cardinal's beautiful to look at, but I don't know why they call it a songbird. Mm. Anyway, I don't know what terminology you use for wild, beautiful birds, but my grandmother used to love them. She would put out the feeder for them, and we'd always, you know, we'd, we'd see them on there, and you could see them out the window and that kind of thing, so it was exciting. And I love them. Um, I put a feeder out now just so that I can see songbirds, and it reminds me of my grandmother. Anyway, um, if you want to help the songbirds, you should also be drinking shade-grown coffee. It's another mm. reason you should go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Not only can you help people around the world, because every 10 people that uh, order their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we're off- able to offer a micro loan to somebody around the world. But also... You're saving songbirds. So go get your free pound at coffee.freetalklive.com. You pay the shipping. You can cancel your subscription at any time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. So uh, we can continue to take your calls about what you want. Also, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But I mentioned this Michelle Malkin uh, character who is a conservative columnist, uh, an author. She's a talking head. She appears on you know a variety of those Shows that you might see on like uh, MSNBC or Fox News, those kind of things. And uh, uh, she never struck me as somebody who'd uh, support marijuana legalization or decriminalization, but apparently she does. The story's from thecannabis.co. 
Michelle Malkin is one of the most revered conservative voices in America, and yet the author, columnist, commentator also actively supports medical and recreational marijuana. She said recently, while drinking coffee at a diner near her Colorado Springs home, quote, the war on drugs has been a failure. Prohibition was also a failure. And pointing out that mainstream hospitals are administering these far more pernicious narcotics to terminally ill patients undercuts the whole idea that marijuana is this dangerous gateway, unquote. Surprised to hear such progressive talk coming from a conservative? Join the club. If you're not surprised, you've likely been reading Malkin's missives for years. I'm not surprised because I've been reading Friedman for years, and uh, Milton Friedman also was firmly on the side of uh, of legalization of all drugs. Um, and you know, it what the thing that surprises me at that is that more conservatives are not on board with legalizing drugs because any economist will tell you that the demand curve for drugs is vertical. That means it doesn't matter what you charge, people are going to buy it. And that means it doesn't matter how expensive they make it, that people will continue to use it. Certainly that's been the experience of anybody who's paid attention to the black market. The cannabis continues here. The pro-marijuana conservative is growing is a growing segment in the U.S. political spectrum, something we'll see more of in the November elections. Malkin's intensely personal story, dating from her time at the Seattle Times in the 1990s to her mother-in-law's current struggle with metastatic melanoma, is a, pot- a potent example of why these two strange bedfellows are becoming increasingly familiar. Longtime Malkin readers will remember her pro medical marijuana columns from the 1990s. This snippet is from one of her July 1997 columns in the Seattle Times. Quote, the nation's war on drugs has been a dismal, costly, inefficient failure. And, and those are the points, by the way, that should resonate the most with the conservative. Of course, the answer, Rich, to why conservatives aren't on board with drug legalization is because there's kind of also this viewpoint that's fairly popular in conservatism that they know what's best and they're going to tell you what to put in your own bodies. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, it's to get over that would require them to really uh, either find some compassion for a drug user, and I don't really see that coming from a lot of conservatives. I, you know, mm-hmm. I'm not 100%. That, to some extent, what you're talking about is true, is that's what conservatives want, is they want to tell you what to do with your body. But um, really, it seems to be about... What I think conservatism comes down to is this is the way we do things. This is the way we've always done things, and this is the way to do things. There mm-hmm. ain't nothing wrong with the way things been done. Just because you don't like it is you can stick it. Um, like that's kind of the uh, you know conservatism. The right, the terminology, the right came mm-hmm. from people sitting on uh, the right side of the like the French uh, parliament or whatever right after the French Revolution. And these were the monarchists, the people that wanted to do things the way they had done things before, not people, you know, these aren't people that are, you know, there's a reason there's an opposing term called progressive. Now, I have a problem with that terminology, too. I don't think conservatives are particularly conservative, and I don't think progressives are particularly progressive. But what's a conservative conserving? They're really conserving culture. And that's what their viewpoint on it. Yeah, old culture, you know, culture is essentially from the past. Culture doesn't come from the future, right? Well, there's different cultures, and they like some and not like others, right? Right, but but you preserve— Like the drug culture. You preserve—yeah, but the drug culture is the new culture, not the old culture. It's not that new. Well, uh, I think that the amount of people doing drugs in this century, or you know, this century and the last century, outweigh the number of people who were doing them in the United States the centuries before. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe you're right. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's certainly marijuana wasn't popular among white people uh, in. 17th and 1800s, from what I can tell. Yeah, but things like laudanum and other things might have been right. Heroin. Yeah, yeah, they were. Um, they were. Now, Opium? there's another issue, which is that Nixon blamed the pot smokers for the resistance to Vietnam, and he noticed the correlation between smoking pot and and not wanting us to be in Vietnam, mm-hmm. and that was the, one of the reasons he hated those damn hippies, as he put it. Um, so it that may the well, war. you know, and we're we're out there protesting for peace and protesting for marijuana too. So maybe there is a correlation there. So, but this is a nice article because it really shows that even there's there's still hope. 
you know, for mm-hmm. somebody who's in the conservative realm. And, and by the way, there's plenty of progressives that like drug prohibition, too. So I don't want to mm-hmm. make it sound like, oh, the progressives are so great on this issue. Plenty of them are drug warriors as well. So anyway, uh, this again, an excerpt from her article in the Seattle Times. Over the past decade, spending on the anti-drug crusade has risen from $5 billion to $17 billion a year. This was from 1997. Uh, drug traffickers and dealers are thriving, raking in an estimated $150 billion a year. Meanwhile, nearly half of the 1.6 million Americans in jail today are there for nonviolent drug offenses. Take those numbers and increase them to make them more accurate for today. Um, mm. That was, again, those numbers are o- over 15 years old at this point. 855, 450 free. But what's the rest of her story? Did she always feel that way? Apparently not. We'll tell you about how she changed her mind in moments on Free Talk Live. Gentlemen. In search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud, the fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste, and safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Memorial Day is a time of remembrance of our fallen soldiers who died for our freedom. In honor of these brave men and women, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is offering huge discounts on several great products. AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com is veteran-owned and operated, so stop what you're doing and support a like-minded company and save a few bucks at the same time. The Memorial Day sale starts right now and ends on May 26th at midnight. Honor above all, AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. That's AmericanSurvivalWholesale.com. Coplock.org slash pivothead. To ensure that a record of the truth of police interactions exists and is accessible, we each need to fill. That's why we're happy to announce the Accountability Through Transparency video contest, the winner of which will receive a pair of Pivothead sunglasses. For more information and to submit your video entry, go to cutblock.org slash pivothead. One, document with a camera a police employee exhibiting double standards or the standards we expect them to live up to. This can be done while on foot, during a vehicle stop, while submitting an open records request, etc. 2. Upload your video to your YouTube channel. 3. Fill out the form at coplock.org slash pivothead by the deadline of midnight Eastern Standard Time, May 23rd, 2014. 4. The winner, chosen by contest sponsors, will be notified by email and the Pivothead sunglasses will be shipped once a mailing address is received. Coplock.org slash pivothead. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. Tickets are available now at a special early bird price of just $40 via credit card or Bitcoin. That $40 price only lasts through Porkfest, so don't delay. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here at 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. And join us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. Talking about how people can change. In this case, conservative columnist, talking head Michelle Malkin, she's changed her mind apparently a long time ago on the cannabis issue. So there's hope mm-hmm. out there for uh, for people who are of one viewpoint today. They may not be that way tomorrow. We'll tell more of her story here in a moment. And for those of you who are already on board with ending the insane war on drugs and also the ideas of liberty as a larger perspective, because there's some people who just want to go and get high, and you can go to Colorado and you can do that. That's not a problem. Uh, but if you actually care about freedom from a wider perspective, if you believe that you should be free to live your life how you want, so long as you don't harm anybody else, you understand that people, in order to be free, have to allow other people to be free as well, then you really need to check out the Free State Project. It's your best chance at achieving liberty in your lifetime, and you'll be able to check it out in person coming up here in about a month at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. We are literally about a month away now from the beginning of the Porcupine Freedom Festival, just over four weeks at this point, about four and a half weeks. It's an awesome time. There are hundreds of people, probably well over a 1,000 people, who will be at Rogers Campground in the beautiful White Mountains of northern New Hampshire for a week-long camping festival. It's June 22nd through the 29th. It's a Sunday through a Sunday. Free Talk Live is going to be broadcasting live from the event every single night, as well as some of the other great LRN.FM talk shows. And it's not a talk show thing or anything like that. I'm just mentioning that we're going to be there. There are all kinds of events happening at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Everything from cook-offs to uh, do-it-yourself classes. There's going to be a build-your-own, uh, what is it, an AR, something or other, some kind of gun. they got some kind of machine gun uh, that you're going to be able to build there. Mm-hmm. And uh, lots of different things. You know, Everything from people who have families, like family events, to couples, single folks. There's mm-hmm. dance parties, the big gay dance party. There's going to be some sort of electronic music uh, party as well. Lots of good times for people at the Porcupine Freedom Festival. Rich, what do you like about it? Well, I always enjoy the uh, daily unofficial 420 rallies, but uh, I'm prejudiced. <laughs> Wait, what makes them unofficial <laughs> versus official? Uh, they're unofficial in that they're not officially acknowledged by Pork Fest. It ah, just happens. Yes. They do happen, and they are fun. Yeah, well, Pork um, Fest is a funny thing because, uh, Rich, you'd agree, I'm sure, that there's a whole bunch of different pork fests that occur at once. I mean, mm-hmm. there's the family pork fests that occur for people that, you know, don't partake at all in, in uh, the pork fest that you partake in. But you get to see the kids mm-hmm. running around at the same time. It's amazing how um, how these worlds exist outside of each other. Like the uh, the young adults will be playing that zombie game where they shoot each other mm-hmm. with the squirt guns. I, mm-hmm. I've always thought it looked interesting, but, you know, I, I haven't played. Yeah, I actually, I actually have. I played uh, assassins, and the funny thing is, my my girlfriend at the time was the person that I was supposed to assassinate. <laughs> so, um, actually, I hope I was, you took her out with uh, with malice and prejudice. Well, actually, the plan was I got killed before I had a chance, but the plan was after sex to roll over and say sorry, darling, and shoot her in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T. It is not too late to get your tickets online. If you wait until the end of the month, if you wait till June, it will be too late. So go and get them now at Porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Michelle Malkin didn't always feel like the insane, that, that the war on drugs is a costly, dismal, inefficient failure. And, and she says the, the, war, the whole war on drugs here. So I presume that means that she's on board with legalization of all drugs. Uh, but this is specifically coming from the cannabis.co, so they're focusing on pot. Malkin didn't always feel that way, however. When she left the L.A. Daily News for the Seattle Times in the mid-1990s, she was as anti-marijuana as most Republicans were at that time. But after a chance debate with the late Seattle medical marijuana advocate Ralph Seeley, who died of uh, in 1998 of a rare bone cancer after suing the state to allow marijuana to be prescribed medically, she changed her mind on the issue. It was after the debate, mind you. Um, yes. that, that's interesting. I never thought anybody's opinion got changed after in debate. a debate. Yeah, because yeah, mm-hmm. I don't really believe in debates. If you're not willing to talk to me with your uh, you know heart and mind open about whatever the issue is, because that's how I feel I come. Now, everybody thinks they're open-minded, right? And nobody is. But I think that's how I come to the uh, to to every debate. And if you can address my concerns, then 
I, I believe that I can change my mind. And if you don't come that same way, then, eh, you know. Well, it does say it was after the debate, yeah. so she probably yeah. had time well, to ruminate on the, what was said. Well, I can think of two debates uh, that I lost. One is I remember running across an Operation Politically Homeless booth when I was 16 years old and debating with the guys there. This and is I'd, a libertarian outreach Yeah, group. this is a libertarian party uh outreach and you know i wish i could have gone back to those guys 10 years later when i became a libertarian and say hey i acknowledge that i lost this argument it just took me 10 years to figure it out <laughs> and then i was arguing from the left even after that i still was not a big believer in economic freedom i just barely fit into the libertarian party after i became a member and Arguing with other libertarians about economics inspired me to read The Wealth of Nations so I could refute it. Good and Lord. I read it and I said, oh my God, not only can I not refute it, but this is one of the most beautiful spontaneous systems I've ever seen in my life. Not only could I not refute it, I couldn't get through the first chapter. <laughs> God, that was some dry stuff. You see, I, I, he makes jokes in it. There are jokes <laughs> in the wealth of nations. He talks about four hundred year old jokes. Yeah. That's so and, funny though, but they're Rich, good because I have a kind of a similar story. I used to run those booths, uh, the Operation Politically Homeless. Now, for those that don't know what that is, if you go to the Advocates for Self Government's website, their website is theadvocates.org. They've got some great outreach tools that help liberty minded people be better communicators of the ideas of freedom. And one of the tools that they have is this what's called Operation Politically Homeless. They've got this diamond chart, as it's called, where they've got uh, this large poster thing that they will they have printed out, and you put it mounted to a poster board, and uh, it's a kind of a, a chart. It's in the shape of a diamond. At the top, it says uh, libertarian. At the bottom, it says authoritarian. On the left-hand corner, it says leftist, uh, and then or uh, not leftist, liberal. liberal. Uh, and then on the right-hand corner, it says conservative. In the middle, it says centrist. And so the idea behind the diamond chart is to expand people's viewpoint on what politics is all about. Because most people are of this sort of right-left spectrum, this right-left paradigm. And so the idea behind the, the diamond chart is to expand that paradigm out and say, hey, wait a minute. How can you look at people on, on this right and left nonsense? Like, for instance, on the right-left paradigm or the right-left spectrum, if I believe in ending the, uh, you know, the war on pot, but I also believe in total gun freedom. Where do you put me on the right-left spectrum? Well, somebody might say, oh, well, you're a centrist. Well, but wait a minute. That would also mean that if I favored gun control and I favored uh, drug laws as well, that I'd also be in the centrist category on the right-left spectrum, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't make sense. So they expanded out this chart to include authoritarian and libertarian, and so the Operation Politically Homeless is goal is to go to public events like like I did mine at uh, gun shows, gay and lesbian pride fest, and the county fairs, mm -hmm. and you you administer this quiz to people. It's a quick ten question quiz, and then you f sort of give them their their score, and they put themselves up on the on the chart. It's a fun thing to do, and I kind of had a similar experience as you did, Rich, just from the other side. I was the person who was giving these quizzes out to people and there were some young males that came up once maybe 13 at the oldest uh came up to the table and they were arguing with us and uh like well look here you know here's your results on the quiz i don't remember what they were but they weren't libertarian i don't think and but they were interested enough to take some information home with them to buy something to take home with them like a little information sheet actually i think they even bought uh libertarianism in one lesson which is a great short little book that we were selling at the table Turns out one of those four young men turned into uh, Neil Connor, who is one of the Free State Project participants. Wow. Uh, he, be he became a libertarian. I don't know how many years later, or maybe he was close to it then. I don't know how close he was, but, you know... Uh, it now he's here in New Hampshire. I mean, the very same young man who was 13 years old one day, and I met him at the county fair. Uh, then several years later, I encountered him again, and now he's an activist, and he left Florida and made the move to New Hampshire. So you never know who you're going to reach at one of those booths when you're talking to people in the public. Yeah. You never and know don't who. think you really lost the argument if he walks away unconvinced. People take time to It takes to time, think. absolutely. So more Plant here in seeds. moments. 855-450 free. Take control of the airwaves here on Free Talk Live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. 
If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. You've been lied to. Lied to by Washington politicians and the Wall Street propaganda machine. My name is Brett Kitchen, best-selling author, and I want to give you free access to my new DVD set, The Millionaire Black Box. Because after losing 35% in my IRA in the crash years ago, I said enough. And since then, I've filmed interviews with dozens of millionaires across the country. I was shocked to discover they don't use mutual funds or worry about stock market crashes. They make double digits in good years and bad. Call now to get this DVD where millionaires reveal five specific wealth strategies like private lending contracts, how to use your IRAs or cash in the bank to make potential double digits each year, tax-free retirement income using the biggest benefits left in the tax code, and how to beat inflation with two strategies you'll never hear from Wall Street. Call 1-800-324-3030 to get free access to the Millionaire Black Box videos and learn the secrets the ultra-rich use to grow your money and protect your wealth. Plus, the next 47 callers get a free copy of my best-selling book, Safe Money Millionaire. Just cover shipping and handling. Call 800-324-3030. Again, that's 1-800-324-3030. 1-800-324-3030. This is the Onion Week in Review. A study finds that Americans need six hours of uninterrupted sleep at work in order to leave the office feeling refreshed and alert. Leading endocrinologists told reporters that more and more people are pulling all-dayers and drinking coffee just to keep themselves awake for meetings and conference calls. And that in order to be properly rested, employees should arrive at work, check their email for a few hours, and be sound asleep by 11.30 a.m. at the very latest. In order for the body to properly function, adults need to make sure that they're well-rested and they're not staying up too late at work. The Lord our God, divine creator and ruler of the universe, announced Wednesday that he does not consider human beings his most impressive creation, saying instead that mountains are categorically superior in every way. Claiming that mankind was a good creation and worthy of praise, the deity explained that human beings simply pale in comparison to the slopes, valleys, and sheer magnitude of a snow-capped 20,000-foot mountain, and that while all humans eventually grow old and die, mountains last forever. This is the Onion News Network. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. We're talking about people changing their minds. It is possible. It just takes time. It takes effort. As Rich was saying, planting seeds, being patient, Watering those seeds a little bit over time, putting ideas in people's heads. I've argued myself into every position I've got. Um, you know, somebody against will, yourself. You mean? Yeah, generally. I mean, I'll hear arguments from other people, but then I have to present them to myself again, over and over. Usually, when I'm sort of had a chance to, uh, you know, be away from other people, for me to accept them. I don't generally accept new ideas just, bing, right there, mm-hmm. unless I. You know, if I have an opinion on a subject, I don't usually change my opinion just right in the middle of Who a conversation. Does? I've heard people do it here on the air, and I'm always mm. amazed at the mm. fluidity um, of people like, wow, wow. I'm impressed when people, um, you know, do that. I don't. 
I've debated people into 180 degree reversals on an issue. Uh, some some of the conservatives that I've talked to about drug pro- drug prohibition have gone 180 degrees during a conversation. During a conversation, very um, persuasive. In this case, Michelle Malkin is the story we're talking about. She's a conservative columnist yeah. who is on the right side of the war on drugs. She wants to see an end to the war on drugs, specifically uh, in this case, they're talking about the war on cannabis. And we'll continue that discussion here in moments. We've got Aaron on the line first, though, in Skype land. Hello, Aaron. Hey, Ian. How are you? Hey, go ahead with your thoughts. I was um, listening to one of the reposted podcasts uh, earlier today about uh, 2011 when Farmageddon came out. You guys heard of this? Yeah, um, I remember the no. name. I'm, I'm trying sure to figure I heard out. of it in 2011. <laughs> yeah, I, I yeah, remember sorry. it, but I don't remember what it was. Um, it was... <laughs> <laughs> it's a documentary about the yeah. uh, the government cracking down on raw milk and uh, these co-op farms where you buy in and they it's a private entity that basically facilitates the movement of of good farm goods to people who are a member without having to go through regulations of the government and to start a storefront. Right. Okay. So essentially with a farm in this case you somebody will buy an animal from you as opposed to buying um you know bits because i think that you know for i have i have pigs um they will be arriving friday i can't wait um but i sell have sold uh one or two of them uh two of them to other people they i'm going to be raising their pig for them and they are going to be using my land and that sort of thing and then Mm -hmm. they get their pig and all the parts and they can take take what they want and leave what they don't want and i'll take care of uh, the, the stuff they don't want that's fine but um, I can't. I don't believe that I can sell hams, pork chops, sausage, bacon. Right. No, that's exactly right. You can sell the animals. You can have a co-op. You can say I want to sell. Sh- like, I'll raise your animals. You can do all that. But then it's on the person to basically process their own thing because you're not allowed to do it for them okay. legally. But uh, I was so I grew up on a family farm. Anyways, I was surprised at how many people in that situation being cracked down on by the government would fight for their own right to be able to put raw milk in their body, but at the same time be saying things like, doesn't the government have better things to do, like go crack down on those pot growers or the tobacco or alcohol people? Mm, Like, mm. why do they have to be bothering us? And I think that there would be a, a loss, there's a lost opportunity to, for these groups of people to work together. For people who believe that it should be right for me to put this into my body, this this raw milk, who, which I, by the way, have experience with, that when I was a kid, I was raised on raw milk until such a time as my mom got squeamish because she became a food inspector, actually, at a restaurant. Mm-hmm. And uh, she started buying this processed milk, and I ac- started getting diarrhea and vomiting from oh, it. Wow. I, actually, it was, I had really bad reactions to it. And to this day, I can't drink it without getting the without getting gas and huh. discomfort. Um, well, there needs to be a cooperation. Let me make the point of the, the cooperation here. So I don't think that, is, is, as much as it makes sense to us, I don't think it makes any sense in today's system. How are we going to do it? Are you going to cooperate? Am, am I, the raw milk producer, going to cooperate with the uh, marijuana grower to buy a lobbyist? Um, am I going to cooperate with them to... Uh, put together a referendum on the state level that says we believe we the people of New Hampshire believe that every individual may put in their body whatever it is that they wish to put in their body, as though that referendum is going to fly um, at all. I just don't think that there's any room, really. Like, I think there's room for outreach, but not room for cooperation. Every, I would say that every single issue liberty group can agree on one issue, and that issue is jury nullification. Mm. So if you, um, you know, the the farmers should be told about jury nullification for, you know, people who do what's important to them, to people who farm um, and, and outside the regulations. Tell the pot people about jury nullification for, uh, for marijuana users. And then introduce them to the ideas of who else would you not want to see to go go to jail? You don't want to see going, 
yourself go to jail, but the price of tolerance is tolerance. So who are you willing to tolerate? Um, and I think that would be a powerful way to, to get them cooperating, at least on one issue. The price of tolerance is tolerance. Well, and also, uh, you know, I, th- I think that where Aaron's coming from here is is a good position. I mean, it would be nice if you could get mm-hmm. uh, the folks who support gun freedom, for instance, to support drug freedom and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Um, how one realistic- of the reasons I wore a gun at the rally. Yeah, and and how and of course, Guns and Weed is a fantastic movie that I mm-hmm. think can help bridge those gaps. But still, even if you can, even if you can get a gun. Uh, freedom advocate to understand let's say you sit them down you they watch guns and weed and it's like an aha moment for them and they they completely get it you still would then have to persuade them to take action right like to go and testify at some sort of hearing on behalf of their uh their drug using friends mm. uh, even though they themselves aren't drug users and i think we're well, more basically likely to what see i would that. want them to do is take action to spread word of jury nullification sure. in their group no, and I think yeah. that's a fine thing. I'm just talking about more of what Aaron was saying, where these guys would, would help them help each other out uh, di- directly. And I think that we're more likely to see that happen in New Hampshire because we have the, the, the liberty activists here who do have more than one issue on which they're willing to work. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you, for instance, Rich, might be willing to go to the state house and in the same day testify on a pot bill and a gun freedom bill. Um, oh, you know, whereas the average activist on one side or the other isn't going to do that. So I think having more well-rounded activists who are willing to take more action in general is really the best way to solve that problem and also build more bridges between different groups. And I think that's what you were talking about, Rich, with the New Hampshire jury, for mm-hmm. instance, uh, which is a very similar group to FIJA, the Fully Informed Jury Association, but mm-hmm. it's more focused locally here in, in New Hampshire. It's more mm-hmm. targeted to New Hampshire mm-hmm. courts. They could be that group that helps build those bridges between the different uh, the different interest groups. Aaron, any other thoughts you want to share? I, yeah, I, th- I think Farmageddon was just kind of a wake up moment for me because I it hit home directly to my heart where I grew up. Like first they came for the pot smokers, and for a long time I wasn't a pot smoker, so I didn't care. I mean, I guess everyone kind of hits one of these moments maybe where they realize that it's possible that it can hit them directly where they're from. And uh, I guess it's kind of a, a flip reaction to say, oh, you guys should all get together. But you anyways, know, I don't that's know what we're doing in New Hampshire. I don't know that <laughs> that's, together. I don't know that that's what ever convinced me. Like I was never sort of on that side of where it's like, oh, well, if I have to be tolerant of in order to for other people to be tolerant of me, I have to be tolerant of other people because I kind of sit in that realm of you know the conservative lifestyle in many ways. I don't need, the, I don't need the tolerance um, in most areas. It's just not it didn't concern me. To me, it was sort of logical arguments over time convinced me that my uh, the arguments that I had been socialized uh, to were just crap. Aaron, thanks for your call and thoughts tonight. Appreciate it. I think you know what he's describing to some extent is exactly what we're trying to do here in New Hampshire, bringing people here. Like I said before, if you just want to smoke pot, New Hampshire is probably not the right place for you. You should just go to Colorado and smoke as much pot as you want. If that's the only freedom you care about, if you only have one freedom that is your concern, you'll find some place where that freedom is more free than other places, generally. Mm-hmm. Uh, if it's drinking raw milk, well, New Hampshire, you can actually do that. So you can come to New Hampshire uh, for that one. But what we want are people who have a larger viewpoint. So people who understand that not only should drugs be legalized, but also guns should be legal and raw milk and all these other things and freedom as well. And we want the people who are willing to come here and see the bigger picture for, yeah, okay, New Hampshire is behind the ball when it comes. Let's be honest. It's behind the ball when it comes to medical marijuana Mm -hmm. and recreational marijuana. The surrounding states, Vermont, Maine, Massachusetts, all have better decriminalization uh, than New Hampshire, which has not yet decriminalized anything as far as marijuana is concerned we're getting closer needs to be done but it hasn't happened yet so we need people to come here to do this here because new hampshire already is the freest likely of all of the 50 states arguably Mm -hmm. the freest of all of the 50 states and we can have it's ranked freest by the only people who've ever ranked them and we can have more (laughs) of that with more people here working in concert with one another on multiple different fronts to take on the state and have more freedom. Go to freestateproject.org to check that out. We'll continue with Hour 3 of Free Talk Live coming up next.
What if humans found a habitable planet, set up housekeeping, and then got left alone by Earth and its big government? Well, that happened in Freehold, Michael Z. Williamson's seminal work. Now available for the first time in a signed, limited hardback edition. Other books in the series are also available in paperback. I cannot recommend a modern fiction work more highly than Freehold. Earth might have left Freehold alone, but it doesn't stay that way. It's war. Get your copy right now at all major booksellers and shop.freetalklive.com. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums, that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. Gold open today, $1,290. Silver open at $19.32. And Bitcoin is trading at $494.98. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Voice and Exit, maximizing human flourishing through radical innovation. Tickets on sale now. Get 10% off with promo code FREEDOM. June 21st at Austin Music Hall. Get yours at voiceandexit.com. And support comes from Accountable Authority. Now offering a public database of police abuse and misconduct online at accountableauthority.com. In the news, the Obama administration's top counterterrorism advisor has promised the CIA will stop the practice of using vaccination programs as a cover for spying. The CIA used a polio vaccination program in Pakistan as part of their effort to collect DNA samples from children in their pursuit of Osama bin Laden. Counterterrorism advisor Lisa Monaco sent a letter to deans at 13 public health schools stating that the CIA has agreed to end the practice and will not use genetic materials obtained through such programs. Documents provided by whistleblower Edward Snowden reveal the National Security Administration has been secretly using cutting-edge technology via a program called Somalget to vacuum up and store the actual content of every phone conversation in the Bahamas. It's part of a broader program called Mystic, which monitors telecommunications in other countries, including Mexico, Philippines, and Kenya. The U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration reportedly gained backdoor access to the country's cell phone tele-network, enabling it to store full-take audio of every mobile call made to, from, and within the Bahamas. Somalcat was reportedly deployed not to fight terrorism, but to locate international narcotics traffickers and alien smugglers. No firearms with your oversized burrito. That's the message from Denver-based Chipotle. After customers in Texas brought what the Huffington Post is calling military-style assault rifles into one of the restaurants. On Monday, Chipotle issued a statement saying the display of firearms in our restaurants has now created an environment that is potentially intimidating or uncomfortable for customers. Traditionally, the company has complied with local laws pertaining to open and concealed firearms. The change in policy stems from a petition circulated by Moms Demand Action for Gun Sense in America. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from My Magic Mud, all natural teeth whitener. Go to MyMagicMud.com to hear a short interview with Dr. Griffin Cole. That's MyMagicMud.com. 
And support comes from Brave New Books online at bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. A 19-year-old Round Rock, Texas former football player has been charged with a first-degree felony for making and selling pot brownies. Jacob Lavaro, who has no criminal history, faces up to life in prison if convicted. His attorney is Jack Holmes, a lawyer of 22 years who also has a decade of experience as a former police officer. Holmes said he's never heard of such charges and is outraged. KHON2 News reported that severe charges are due to the use of hash oil. Texas was able to include the brownies' ingredients to determine the weight of the drugs. Holmes says he's prepared to fight. If you'd like to support Jacob, visit his Facebook page at Protest and Save Jacob Lavaro. At least 33 communities in Texas say they could be out of water within three months. Dozens more say they could go dry in just 45 days, reported KHOU-TV. Pebble Beach, a community northwest of San Antonio, has had their request approved for a $350,000 grant from the Department of Agriculture to dig new, deeper wells. Bandera County will match $90,000 to acquire property in order to build a 30,000-gallon ground storage tank for the community. Researchers with the Center for Environment and Health at Imperial College London are launching the largest study in the world to look into whether cell phones and other wireless devices affect children's brain development. The study of cognition, adolescence, and mobile phones, or SCAMP, will examine whether memory and attention span in adolescence are modified due to radio frequencies emitted by the devices. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Mass Appeal, affordable high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online, massappealinc.com. And support comes from GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. Homegrown food on every table. That's GrowYourOwnGroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. Reminding you, spread liberty with a smile. Clark County paramedics responded to a frantic 911 call from a nearby motel this morning where the Lord our God, a divine creator and ruler of the universe, had been found nude and unconscious following his latest suicide attempt. God, whose sources say had recently grown far more depressed and withdrawn from humanity than usual, reportedly attempted to hang himself from the base of his motel showerhead after ingesting an unknown quantity of Ambien. Motel sources claim that God's room had been left in a state of disarray and reveal that they had found a brief note written by the omnipotent deity, saying that the suicide stems from long periods of unhappiness he had been suffering in recent millennia, including the death of his only child, thousands of years of war and genocide, chronic weight gain, and the aftermath of his messy 15,088 BC divorce. Paramedics say the Supreme Being had no pulse when they arrived. The Lord's overdose comes in the wake of several widely publicized previous suicide attempts, including a 1985 incident when the Lord leapt from the Grand Canyon but changed into a bird at the last second and flew to safety. This is the Onion News Network. Free Talk Live, launching into the third hour of the program. Plenty of time for you with your thoughts, your calls. You dial in toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That is the Pro XPN toll-free line. It's 855-450-3733. And we've got Skype. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. With you in studio tonight, Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. Rich Paul. Rich is here courtesy of the uh, 420 Foundation. What, uh, who's, uh, whose courtesy are you here with us tonight? I don't know. I, By 420 courtesy? Foundation, NH Jury. NH Jury, uh, yeah, because you have been, you and I have been talking about doing more with NHJury.com, which I'm excited about, uh, maybe doing yeah. some, some fundraising, doing some advertising uh, with yeah. NH Jury. The folks out in Manchester, as I mentioned earlier tonight, have been doing some jury outreach. They're doing it on mm-hmm. a consistent basis, so kudos to them for doing that. We actually, uh, you know, we've been doing it here in Cheshire County for years on a regular basis. Whenever there's a jury outreach, we're there handing out information to potential jurors. And now they're, mm-hmm. that has expanded now to Manchester. And in Manchester, they have more juries being selected. There's, mm-hmm. you know, there's more cases. So they do it every two weeks, whereas it's a monthly thing here in Cheshire County. Mm-hmm. I would like to see that spread throughout all 10 counties in New Hampshire, personally. And I think that is something that will become more and more possible as more Free State Project participants make the move here. So uh, so we'll continue here. We'll take your calls. We're also going to get back into the story about Michelle Malkin. She is a conservative columnist who 
has changed her mind about the war on drugs, the war on pot as well. We'll get uh, into that deeper here, but also take your calls at 855-450-FREE. Plus, Mark's going to tell us about federal agencies using money intended for the poor. And we'll tell you what they were using the money for here in a little bit. Let's just say it wasn't to help the poor. Uh, first, we go to the phones where Dumping Lemur is on the line with us. Dumping Lemur, you're on Free Talk Live. Dumping Lemur on Skype. Going once. I can see his picture on Dumping, Skype. Yeah, he doesn't look like a lemur. lemur at all. No, no, he doesn't. Going You're twice. Now? Oh, we there hear you. Is. There you are. I'm sorry. I was trying to use um, iPhone headphones. That wasn't going well. Gotcha. So what's up? You're on the air. It was not. How are you guys doing? Uh, yeah, Good. you know, I've been through the whole political spectrum, really, in, in my personal beliefs. Um. I, I, when when uh, 9-11 occurred, I was a diehard Republican, uh, all for Bush, and then the wars all started, and I, I I just started seeing stuff online about death and destruction. I didn't like it. It turned me into a raging hippie communist, you know, <laughs> practically. I mean, well, really. If you, get, if you went to communist, you went too far. Turn <laughs> around, come back. <laughs> Yeah, that that was that. Eventually, uh, when Obama got into office, and I saw that it was pretty much more of the same, uh, that's when I really got interested in the whole liberty thing. And I met a bunch of people here in Mississippi, near where I live, uh, that they have a libertarian party and all that, and it's pretty active. And, it, you know, it, it's not so easy to change someone's mind. You know, I, I didn't – no one that I talked to could ever tell me that I was wrong, that I believe that there should be the spreading of wealth. You know, we should cut down people's money. I, I, I never thought that. I never thought that that was, that, that was a, a, a good thing to do, to stop spreading the wealth. Until I saw things happen firsthand. You know, it takes a certain amount of people do, you know, get they get their wish. And then once they get their wish, they they're like, whoa, this stinks. And after they've had a chance and this is why I think that the world and I predicted this to some extent. I did predict this. Um, I predicted that once people got to see, well, the Republicans had the House, the the White House, the Senate from uh, 2000 to 2006. And the Democrats, ha Democrats had it from 2008 to 2010. Once we had we went through both of those swings, we there had to be a large liberty swing because at that point enough people had been like, well, we've tried both of these things and it didn't mm -hmm. work. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much exactly where I went. I mean, you know, I was in high school and thought, oh, um, well, Bush is so terrible, I should, uh, I, sh I should support, you know, the the whole. Uh, Everything that's not Bush, right? Pretty much. I just went automatically to the opposite pole. Well, and, how uh, could you do anything else? It's all you knew, right? That was your paradigm. It was right. either one side or the other. The the thing that really brought me on board Liberty was listening to Ron Paul mm. a lot in uh, 2004, and in in 2008 too. But 2004, what was he doing then? He was. Bad mouthing uh, you just, Bush, pretty okay. much. <laughs> you just saw some stuff from him. 2004 is pretty far back. Many people got on board in 2008 and then 2012. Man, you got to love Ron Paul. He is he's, one of the main recruiters for these ideas, and he's done a very, very good job. I'm very glad to well, have supported his And campaigns. the support that mm -hmm. he gets from other people. I mean, Ron Paul's uh, you know, a, a voice for liberty, but you know, Free Talk Live, we were on the air in 2004 talking about Ron Paul, and that, you know, that that other folks like us have managed to to push him forward. So uh, so dumping Lemur, uh, how how are things going down there in Mississippi? You said the Libertarian Party's the recruitment uh, really active. <laughs> like, what are you guys yeah, doing? We, we do have we have uh, a Liberty Fest coming up here in uh, Lafayette County. The Libertarian Party. It's on June twenty eighth. If y'all don't mind me giving the shout out. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's going to be at Foxfire Ranch. If there's any Mississippians listening. Um, where there's going to be live music and food and stuff like that. 
and it's just going to be a discourse and you know trying to bring people in with music and beer and food you so know? this is more of a party not so much like a political convention no no it's not a convention we we've, we've got a few candidates in the libertarian party running as well down here uh, what's Danny, the uh, highest they've uh, managed to achieve uh, well, we've not. I don't know if we've got anybody elected really anywhere. Oh, it's, I don't suspect you. He just meant he just meant the highest vote total. I think they're the percentage. Um, God, I know Danny got um three. Yeah, he didn't get many votes. I mean, he probably <laughs> got a couple thousand at the most so, in, in the first district. D- Daryl, who's our co-host on uh, Friday nights, actually was not on Friday night's show because he went down to the Florida Libertarian Party convention to be a speaker, which was great of them to invite him down there as a publisher of FPP.cc. And, uh, you know, he's got his hands in a variety of different sort of liberty media. So it was great that he was able to go down there. He brought some Escape to Keen postcards and uh, managed to get rid of all of them while he was down there, which was great. Uh, but I asked him, how many people were attending the Florida Libertarian Party convention? I mean, this is the, this is the yearly convention. This is the yearly gathering of Florida libertarians. I mean, Florida is one of the most populated states in the United States. So my question was, yeah. how many people were at this convention? And he said, maybe 100 throughout the whole time. Wow. And we get more I, than that in Keenvention. We had more than that in a, in the Keenvention first year of Keenvention here in Keen, Little Keen, New Hampshire. And I went to the Libertarian Party of Florida uh, convention over a decade ago down there, and I can tell you there aren't that many more people there now than there were there a, a decade ago. So it's just they're not having growth. I mean, there's no evidence of any kind of growth uh, whatsoever, no evidence of uh, of any success, and uh, it's just got to be really frustrating down there. Yeah, l- l- let me ask you this. What would it take for you to pick up and move your life to New Hampshire where we've had victory after victory in the liberty-oriented uh, realm? Would it help you to know that we've got anarchists in our legislature? <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for me, you know, Mississippi is my home. And Florida was my home too. That's where uh, yeah. I was also pushed out of my mother's womb in the South. The 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 whole the whole issue I have is with moving to New Hampshire is one, it's really cold. That's yep. number one. Hey, I can't. I couldn't take those winters. Well, what what does that mean? I am from Sarasota, Florida, as is Ian over here, um, and I I don't know what you mean when you say that I couldn't take it. We don't live outdoors. You know that, right? Well, I might have to. I'm dirt cold. Well, okay. <laughs> I do. The, the, okay, so it would take a certain amount of savings to get here. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, and uh, but I mean, you know, we have we have heaters and that kind of thing. And the fact is, warm weather doesn't buy liberty. As a matter of fact, I would argue the opposite. Governments are bigger and more intrusive down in the south than they are up in the no- the north, especially in New Hampshire. There's a Without lot of liberty, would, warmth we, we is cold comfort. With other groups. All right, stand by. I'll let you. I'll let you answer the in question in full here. Hang on, uh, dumping lemur. There's more on the way on Free Talk Live. Stop harming your body with coffee from grocery stores or most chains. Start making a difference one cup at a time. We've partnered with Camano Island Coffee Roasters to offer you a free pound of BuzzBox coffee. It's organic, so no harmful pesticides or toxins. Shade grown, meaning less acidity and no heartburn. Try the best of the best for free. Just cover shipping. 10% of future purchases go toward helping us give the gift of human freedom around the globe with at least 100 microloans via World Vision. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Summer is almost here, which means it's time to get out and play. And at the Guitar Center Memorial Day Sale, you'll find some of our lowest prices of the year on the best gear throughout the store. And with deals like your choice of two guitar stands or wall hooks for 10 bucks, or two pairs of Vader drumsticks for 5 bucks, or three sets of Ernie Ball electric guitar strings for 10 bucks, the only question is, where will you play? Guitar Center's Memorial Day Sale, now through Monday, in-store and online. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth, slide into a recession, or at worst, depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government overextends itself and spends beyond its means? Many investors are turning toward gold as a common-sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a 
powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full-color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000-year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. This is Free Talk Live, and you can bring up anything that you want here. Toll free at 855 4 free that's 855-450-3733 join us online go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we share with you there you can also send something to our tip jar if you've got a big if you've got some bitcoins you want to share with free talk live go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com you'll find the free talk live bitcoin address there you can just drop whatever you feel is appropriate in the free talk live tip jar in fact those tip jar contributions are actually going to help us do our Bitcoin matching program that we probably haven't talked about enough. It's happening between now and the beginning of the Porcupine Freedom Festival, where you will be able to become a Free Talk Live amplifier at amp.freetalklive.com. And uh, five bucks a month, for instance, is what the AMP program costs. You uh, sign up for the AMP program, and then your $5 will be doubled by our generous matching contributors. So Free Talk Live takes in 10 bucks from, uh, from your $5. And then for your first month of the AMP program, as an added incentive to get you on board, we are offering to you your five bucks back or ten bucks or whatever amount you decide to AMP at. The amount that you AMP at will come back to you in the form of Bitcoin if you want it. If you don't want it, then we'll keep the five bucks and put it to good use. But uh, if you want the Bitcoin, maybe it's your first Bitcoin you've ever received. A lot of people are, are starting with Bitcoin because of the Free Talk Live AMP Bitcoin matching program. So you amp the show at amp.freetalklive.com. You help us get on more radio stations. You help us advertise online. We're doing Google AdWords, and it's working very well. And uh, so we get the five bucks from you, then the five bucks from the matching contributors, and then we send you five bucks worth of amp uh, worth of Bitcoin in return. All you have to do is just send me an email after you sign up, Ian at freetalklive.com, and include your Bitcoin address. It's that simple. So go to check out the AMP program. It really makes a big difference for us when you AMP 
at amp.freetalklive.com. It helps us get the ideas of liberty into more ears. And we're on with uh, Dumping Lemur in Mississippi. And, Mark, you had asked him the kind of uh, ultimate question that a lot of us liberty-minded folk who've moved to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project are always wondering of our fellow liberty, uh, liberty-minded people across the country, which is, what is it that's holding you back? What is it that's preventing you from making the move to the place with the largest amount of libertarians, voluntarists, anarchists, ever collected in one place with political successes that are happening here? People are actually getting elected. And so far, the answer has been it's it's cold. Well, you you were obviously heading down that trail, and I didn't want him. Like I want the, what you need to do if you've got a prospect in a certain circumstance is that you have to find out what their issue is, and usually it's not the first thing that they um, they mention. Usually have for me, to, it was the cold. That was the big concern for me, having been a Florida native. Um, being very skinny as well, uh, yeah, I was. You really don't hold much heat about uh, the cold, and I still I don't like being cold. I, let me tell you that, but I do love the community of liberty activists here. There's nothing like it anywhere else in the world, and to me, that warms my heart enough to keep me here. It's only whole cold three quarters of, uh, a quarter of the year. As soon as I could escape Michigan at 25, I did, and I moved down to Florida for most of my adult life because I hate the cold. And I remember calling up my father to tell him I was moving to New Hampshire, and he said, do you know where it is? And I said, yes, of course I know where it is, Dad. And he said, but you hate the cold. It's cold up there. I said, Dad... Without without freedom, warmth is cold comfort. Indeed. So we're back with uh, Dumping Lemur, and you were going to continue your answer, and we didn't have time because of the break. So go ahead. Well, hey, yeah, guys. Um, the, the the other, I think, I think actually the biggest reason besides the cold is I'm getting married in October Ooh, here. Yeah. And I've already put in the deposit. We you're, on hold the on. Venue. You're, hold on. You've uh, you're getting married in October, and you put the deposit in on the venue for for the marriage, right? Yeah, yeah, okay. I've already done that. Okay, well, we allow women in New Hampshire. And we're still open <laughs> after <laughs> October. <laughs> well, the question is, how would the, the soon-to-be wife uh, feel about moving to Indeed. New Hampshire? She's super apolitical. She doesn't give a, 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 a bit about uh, liberty or, or anything, really. So then but, as long as it were, if she were to find out that it was like a really great place to raise a family, for instance, which I believe is uh, New Hampshire's the number one place uh, for raising a family, then, you know, if you could convince her for other reasons, she might be willing to move somewhere? I mean, that's possible. It, it, it would be very work-dependent. We're both in the medical field. I'm mm-hmm. in school. It's There's a lot of stuff we're yep, still yep. doing. I, I find that the it's no, it's no easy task to move across the country. Indeed, I find the most uh, relevant, uh, you know, reasons are sort of you know we got family here. I grew I grew up here. Our family's here. Um, you know, my job is geographically centered, and I really can't pick up. I can't get one that's as good in New Hampshire. Um, you know, those kind of, of things. You know, family and 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 jobs. You know, it's it's it can be difficult. But I, what I can say to you is is the frustration you feel around. Um, you know, the, the libertarian campaigns that you participate in that uh, fall flat on their faces <laughs> and uh, look largely like a gigantic waste of money don't yeah. feel that way up here. Well, you know, I wouldn't say that we've, we're failures down here. Um, we, we put a lot of feelers out with other organizations, even wherever we can find commonality. And we get out there and we put up posters with them. You know, we hold up our our pickets with them. If it's uh, and, and we've done a lot here in in uh, Oxford to put heat on our uh, uh, our big one of our biggest goals is getting rid of the Metro Narcotics Unit. It's there's like no oversight. It's this big uh, federally funded narcotics unit they've got here because the university, the county, and the city have all pooled together their resources and made a metro narcotics unit hmm. in, in a, a county with Do like you feel crime. like there's actually a prospect to get rid of that unit? Yes, we're doing a lot. And what I mean by we're doing a lot is people are I mean we we we're getting people aware of what a confidential informant is and and it's really I mean we've gotten pieces in our local newspapers and stuff like that. So it's not it's not a failure. I mean, we pick our battles. 
Uh, well, we you know, if you ever do get rid of the narcotics unit, that would be a huge success story and would love to hear about it here on Free Talk Live. Uh, thank you for the call tonight. I do appreciate hearing from you. Good luck down there. Uh, thanks again. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I mean, it, it just depends. What do you consider to be a success versus a failure? I mean, ultimately, in Florida, where I lived for most of my life, um, I did a lot of libertarian outreach, as I was discussing earlier, Rich, when you brought up the Operation Politically Homeless booth. I did a lot of that stuff. And they were successful in the pers- from the perspective, it depends on your perspective, right? So from the perspective of... Did I talk to a lot of people about the ideas of freedom? Yeah, I sure did. I talked to thousands of people about the ideas of freedom. Did a lot of people score libertarian on that quiz that hadn't otherwise thought they were libertarian? You got a lot of little dots to put on your poster. I got those. Yeah, I did. Mm -hmm. And and did I sell some books to some people and sell some information to some people? Because the way I used to run the booth was I wouldn't give stuff away because, well, I didn't have as much money to invest in these things, so I wanted to cover my costs. So I would charge for my handouts. That way, somebody wouldn't just take something and throw it away. If they pay a quarter for it, they're more likely to fold it up, put it in their pocket, take it home, and look at it later on. And uh, so I sold flyers left and right. So... Yeah, it was a success from the perspective that I probably introduced a bunch of people to the ideas of liberty who hadn't found it before, but it was a failure from the perspective of not a one of them ever came to a Libertarian Party meeting, and so it never really changed into anything. New Hampshire as anarchists in the legislature. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's true. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. You can take control here on Free Talk Live. I just... If you owe the IRS back taxes, listen carefully. Sweeping changes to IRS policies will help more people than ever eliminate their tax debts once and for all. And now, thanks to Dan Pillow, you can get the tax help you need to end your tax nightmare. Hi, I'm Dan Pilla. I've helped thousands of people reduce or eliminate tax debts they couldn't pay. And after more than 30 years of experience dealing with the IRS, I can tell you there's no such thing as a hopeless tax case. With the IRS's new policies, it's easier than ever to put your tax debt behind you once and for all. Call now at 800-346-6829 to learn how I can help you. You know your IRS debt will not go away by itself, but you don't have to live in fear anymore. Call 800-346-6829. Learn how I can help you eliminate wage and bank levies, release tax liens, and negotiate a settlement with the IRS that will put your tax nightmare behind you forever. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. Or go to my website, TaxHelpOnline.com. That's TaxHelpOnline.com. We know you're out there. We can feel you now. We know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. We don't know the future. We aren't here to tell you how this is going to end. We're here to tell you how it's going to begin. We're going back to editing the next edition of Freedom's Phoenix Digital Magazine now, where we are telling the people what you don't want them to know. We're showing them a world without you, a world without rules and controls, without borders or boundaries, a world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice we leave to you. Subscribe at freedomsphoenixeasy.com. That's freedoms with an S, phoenixeasing.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Juicy Juice, 100% juice, providing a full serving of fruit in every four ounces. Visit us at juicyjuice.com. When it comes to nutrition, kids need both fruits and vegetables every day to stay healthy and grow. For the ideal mix, your kid should have at least one and a half cups of any veggie or 100% veggie juice and one cup of any fruit or 100% fruit juice a day. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at gunsandweed.com or on Amazon. That's gunsandweed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's gunsandweed.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Take control of the airwaves right here, toll free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Join us on Skype via username lrn.fm. You may talk about whatever's on your mind. Still to come here, the feds apparently were taking money intended for the poor and spending them on massages, among other things. Mark (laughs) has a rundown of some... We'll give you more of the details on that. Plus, the remainder of the Michelle Malkin transition from kind of hardline conservative conservative into somebody who still is a conservative but has changed her mind on the war on drugs. We'll continue that story as well. Plus, blockchain is added again. You know about the blockchain.info app that is available for Android-based devices that allows you to have your own personal wallet for Bitcoin. It's a very handy app. I love it. I use it and actually just used it a few days ago. I went down to the local corner news here in Keene, New Hampshire, which actually now has a Bitcoin accepted here window sticker up. So you go and actually the, apparently what happened at corner news a, a couple of weeks ago was some drunk fool kicked the door in the glass on the door. And so that whole pain shattered and it, of course, had a bunch of kind of, you know, we accept this and that sort of brand stickers on it. So now the door doesn't have any stickers except for the brand new Bitcoin one. So (laughs) the Bitcoin is even more uh, obvious than it has ever been. The fact that this little corner store where you can go down, you want a pipe? You can go down and buy a pipe there. You can get some refreshments. You can get some tobacco, and you can pay for it in Bitcoin. In fact, you can even buy silver with Bitcoin at uh, the Corner News Store in nice. Keene, New Hampshire. So I, I silver? What kind of silver are they sell? They've actually got Sons of Liberty mint silver there. Yes, they fact, do. Awesome. Which is minted here in New Hampshire by Free State Project participants. Yeah. So it's very cool. There was actually a couple guys who were visiting here uh, a few months ago that. They wanted to make a Bitcoin purchase. They were new movers. They wanted to see what it was like to go and use Bitcoin in real life. So we took them over to Corner News, and they actually bought silver with Bitcoin, which was like extra fun, right? Because it's cool to go and buy some rolling papers with Bitcoin, uh, but it's also cool to buy uh, silver. More cool to buy something like silver. So um, that's what I was there for the other day. I just went in, gra- grabbed some rolling papers. They totaled it up. I grabbed my phone, got the blockchain app out, and sent them some Bitcoin. I mean, it was easy. So blockchain makes it easy. And now they're making merchant acceptance of Bitcoin even easier than before. With their new merchant app, you can go to blockchain.com. So not blockchain.info. Blockchain.info is for your personal wallet. Blockchain.com is if you're a business owner, you got a point of sale, a physical location where you want to accept Bitcoin. That's what their new merchant app allows. And there's no ID requirement. You do not have to fill out some sort of paperwork. There's no terms of service, no agreement. You just go and download their app and get started over at blockchain.com. So back to the story about Michelle Malkin. Uh, Just to bring you up to speed, she didn't always feel like the war on drugs was a dismal, costly, inefficient failure. Those are her words. Uh, In the 1990s, she actually had a debate in the mid-1990s with someone named Ralph Seeley, who was a uh, medical marijuana advocate at the time. He ended up dying in 1998 of a rare bone cancer that... uh, He actually sued the state to allow marijuana to be prescribed medically. She changed her mind after debating Mr. Seeley, and his arguments were legitimate, she said. And less than a year after his death, Washington voters approved medical marijuana. 
Now, Jack, uh, I mean, excuse me, um, Ian, I have said Jack because Jack just lost his first tooth. That's I just your got, son. Uh, yeah, yeah, I just got the uh, the news on Facebook, and I'm excited about it. Sorry about that. Um, would you say that sort of largely and generally that a conservative that believes in ending the drug war qualifies as a big tent libertarian, like somebody just sort of, you know, a little, a little L libertarian? I would say there's somebody who uh, could be worked on. I mean, well, that's that's a positive development, certainly I, I, for them. I'm just them. wondering here. I mean, you know, d- does a libertarian have to be a full-fledged, principled libertarian, or where does the where is the line? Well, you know how I feel about it. I'm pretty hardcore on the definition of libertarian. I'm wondering what Rich Paul would have to say about that question. Um, I started calling myself a libertarian, and uh, if you look at the at the Nolan chart, I was like halfway between liberal and libertarian but i was like one click over so i was barely libertarian yeah. on economic issues i was mm-hmm. good on social issues um but i think that's good enough to call somebody a libertarian to some extent they're in that uh that quadrant um but i think so that's true However, uh, I think also that people who call themselves libertarian who don't really understand what the idea is supposed to be. I mean, a libertarian is supposed to be somebody who doesn't uh, support the initiation of force to achieve political or social goals. I mean, that's kind of the classic libertarian party definition of uh, of a libertarian. And but there's people in the libertarian party that don't support that. I mean, that well, do, they it's don't. a failure of the libertarian party, in, in my opinion. But uh, well, I don't know. I mean, my my uh, argument was I'll vote libertarian until I'm a little bit too free, you know, and and that was kind of my training wheels way of becoming a, a libertarian is, you know, if we get more freedom in this country and they start to go too far, then I might say, OK, well, I'll vote Democrat again or something. So it They'll doesn't fix that problem. I can you assure know, you. You should always vote for somebody who's more radical than you are, because he's not going to get everything he wants, but he's going to move people. He's going to move things in that direction. So if you're almost a libertarian, you should vote for a, a bloody anarchist, and you might get a little bit of what you want. I think the problem with being loose with the term libertarian is, the, on one hand, the good thing about it is we want people to call themselves libertarian. We want people to familiar themselves with the word we want them to feel like it's applicable to them on the other hand you get people like neil bortz glenn beck these are two radio talk show hosts who uh dennis miller i think even describes himself as a libertarian this guy's a war hawk uh so dennis miller stopped using the term libertarian he? but he did use it in the uh late 90s he used and, it in the in the he, aughts too yeah in he his used radio it, career. i think right up until uh 9 11 and he pretty much uh, he's used it since then as well i mean the, really? these guys will use the term to differentiate themselves from the other kind of conserva clone mm. talk show hosts out there and so mm. you end up getting somebody like a dennis miller because dennis miller's only been doing radio for like five years uh, or seven years or something like that. And within that time frame, his show has been described as libertarian. There's another guy named mm-hmm. Todd Schnitt, uh, who is this puker out of uh, Tampa. Yes. The, the worst radio puker that you've ever heard. Puking is where you kind of affect the extra radio flare on your voice and it sounds ridiculous. Uh, Todd is even worse than that. Okay, He's even would you worse put, than uh, that. Uh, the conspiracy guy there, uh, Jones... In that Alex category. Jones. Alex Jones. No, is a- Alex Jones has the deep gravelly He's got voice. A gravelly and I don't voice. know if he affects it in any way, but <clears throat> I mean, you know, <laughs> it hurts. Some it people, hurts. some people really have that voice. Is that painful to do that, Mark? Oh, it is for, for me, me to do yeah. an Alex Jones impression. It's very painful. Get a freaking polyp. So um, anyway, this Todd Schnitz, another one of them, who describes himself as libertarian, but the dude isn't even close to libertarian. I mean, at all, in my opinion. So you have a problem with this poisoning of the term because of the big tent effect of you know wanting to include people you also then you end up including everybody who claims to be a libertarian and they're just out there botching it up yeah well there's a positive and a negative to that though which is if somebody thinks that uh, glenn beck is right on everything and he thinks he's a libertarian and he meets you and you say oh i'm a libertarian too that's always an opportunity to make him a better libertarian i agree and i think and, glenn beck is probably the best example of somebody who's come the furthest of all the other talk show hosts he had jeffrey tucker he, on his show the other day yeah yeah I, I heard about that and he's been saying some other things and i've always had hope for him i've never thought he was a moron i thought 
thought he was like me. He was making a slow transition. Mm-hmm. Um, so, and, you know, that's probably very powerful for his listeners also is watching him move closer right. to us. So, you know, I I don't condemn people like that. I don't say, oh, what a terrible guy. I say, this is where he's wrong. Just Absolutely. like Cantwell, I don't say he's a terrible guy. I say, this is where he's wrong. But I'm not going to stay quiet if somebody claims to be a libertarian and then goes on advocating for, oh, I don't know, bombing uh, people in other countries. Sorry, oh. not a libertarian position. Yeah, I don't like the, the, the term libertarian. I don't use it to describe myself. I use it on the show a great deal. I'll say libertarian ideas and stuff like that. But um, I, I, you know, if somebody says, "Are you a libertarian?" I'll say, "I'm willing to call myself that as long as you don't judge me by the other libertarians you've met." Yeah, right. What I prefer to say is, "I'm a conscientious objector." Well, to what? I I, I, well, I withhold the right to to object to anything. We'll come back with more of your thoughts. Welcome here, eight fifty five four fifty three. It's free talk live. May I have your attention, please? If you are trying to lose weight, we need your help. We're AF Plus, and we have too much product and too few participants in our nationwide risk-free trial. If you need to lose 30 pounds or more and would like to participate, call now, 1-800-967-9495. AF Plus is an amazing, proven breakthrough in weight loss, a once-daily capsule that can help you lose weight in days. It's also one of the healthiest ways to lose weight because each capsule contains natural ingredients, including green tea extract. You'll boost your metabolic heart rate, allowing you to shed pounds in days with just one capsule a day. Be among the first to call for your risk-free trial. Again, we have too many risk-free trials and too few participants. If you would like to lose 30 pounds or more by taking just one all-natural capsule a day, call now to participate in this nationwide risk-free trial, 1-800-967-9495. That number again is 1-800-967-9495. I'm a very bad man, and today I watched you leave for work. Then I kicked your door and took your stuff. Without a door devil reinforcing your door frame, it was like you invited me. Don't worry, I'll check back in a couple weeks. Once you've got new stuff. (laughs) Door devils are available at participating Ace Hardware stores and locksmiths. Or visit doordevil.com. Gentlemen, in search of a million-dollar smile that'll make them take notice, I mean really get their attention, then get the mud. My Magic Mud. The fluoride-free whitener with no chemicals, additives, GMOs, or bad taste. And safe to swallow. My Magic Mud detoxifies, reduces sensitivity, cleans and strengthens your teeth while it whitens. Comes as a powder for pure whitening power. Start looking good for that special someone. Get the mud now. MyMagicMud.com Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. If you want to move to the free state And you're looking for some real estate Well, I know a guy who's really great It's the realtor Mark Warden Do you want a home with 20 acres A lakeside cabin Any takers for renters Buyers and sellers too Mark Warden is the guy for you 
PorcupineRealEstate.com. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Moments remain. Whoa, there the music go. Okay. <laughs> it's hard drop. Or I've just slammed it down. All right, 855-450 free, 855-450-3733. You can still take control of the airwaves here in the remaining moments of the show. With you in the studio, it's Ian here. Rich Paul. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. You like the show, you want to help support Free Talk Live, shop with us. You can go and get your shopping taken care of through Amazon. There's Amazon U.S., Canada and UK. You link into the appropriate one for your shopping experience. Free Talk Live gets a portion of the purchase price. Whatever it is you're buying, Free Talk Live will get a cut. And uh, go to shop.freetalklive.com to do that. Again, that's shop.freetalklive.com. Let's continue the story here about Michelle Malkin. She, in fact, we were just doing a little research on her during the break. Apparently, you know, she's certainly no libertarian. She uh, supported Japanese internment during World War II. You looked that up apparently a moment ago, Mark. Well, well she wasn't around to support Japanese internment during World War II. No, she but after has the fact, defended it after the fact. Which would mean she might support it again if something like that were to uh, to come up again. Uh, true, true. As long as it's uh, against a group that she supports it on, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, for, as long as the reason's good enough. And by the way, I didn't look it up. It was a, um, a Stephanie Murphy, my uh, ah, okay. Sunday Our producer. Yeah. Great. So anyway, the story here from Mich- uh, from thecannabis.co is at least showing us that she was able to change her mind on something, which is a good thing. People do change over time, and uh, the more we can pr- put the ideas out of liberty out there in as persuasive of a manner as possible, the more likely that people's minds will change. She had a debate with a man who ended up dying of bone, uh, bone cancer. He was a medical marijuana patient. He It was a year after his death that Washington actually voted in medical marijuana and she says people have always asked me when have you ever changed your mind i tell them ralph seeley changed my mind she said sitting in a booth at uncle sam's pancake house in manitou springs i think this is absolutely worth asking yourself is when it comes to your political ideas when have you changed your mind and if you haven't or if you can't come up with a few instances, not one, um, not Ralph Seeley, um, not, y- you know, you need to, a few ideas, then consider that either A, you haven't spent much time thinking about this at all, or B, you're such a dyed in the wool partisan that you'll never have your mind changed about anything. And you're probably wrong. <laughs> so um, the place they were at was uh, Uncle Sam's Pancake House, where her regular is their corned beef hash with scrambled eggs, hash browns, and wheat toast. She says, "I was on a local public." Well, isn't she? Isn't she a? <laughs> she's a tried and true uh, re- Republican with that meal. I was on a local public TV debate, and at the time, I was fairly a fairly orthodox, law and order, pro war on drugs conservative columnist. I would accept at face value anything Bill Bennett had claimed about the war on drugs. Note. Bennett is the former director of the Office of National Drug Control Policy. He's a former drug czar. Uh, and and we, we say ONDCP usually pretty quickly on the show. So. And now he, well, I don't like to give acronyms because not everybody knows what it stands for. But anyway, uh, Bennett is actually now a conservative talk show host, so he's still putting that same uh, line out there for people. Anyway, she says, of course, it's been an abysmal trillion-dollar failure, and anybody who's a limited government conservative can't ignore the decades-long record of all of this money wasted and how ineffectual it's been. But going back to the debate with Ralph Seeley, we were on the opposite side of the debate, him in his wheelchair, and he had chordoma, an awful degenerative cancer in the spine. He was paralyzed with a trach. He was so articulate, and you can't or you couldn't argue with his facts. Just like that, Malkin, who jokingly refers to herself on occasion as a right-wing nutjob, switched over to the pro-marijuana side of the debate. And nearly two decades after her initial change of heart, readers came across her recent My Trip to the Pot Shop column on March 25, 2014. 
In the column, Malkin talks about Celia and her trip to a pot shop in Pueblo West, where she and her family procured 10 pre-rolled joints, a vape pen, and two containers of cheddar cheese-flavored marijuana crackers, <laughs> as they were out of brownies at the time. The goods weren't for Malkin or her husband, Jesse. They were for his mother, Carol Malkin, whose melanoma had returned. I think she had hit a really low point when she was in the hospital a couple of weeks ago, said Malkin of her mother-in-law, Carol. When we got her out of the hospital and she was able to try different things, including marijuana, she had taken some of those crackers to help with her appetite, and we all agreed that it helped her immensely. Malkin's story is a uniquely American tale, one that has uh, seen growth and triumph. Then they kind of go to kind of tell her her story about how she came up, was raised, and how she became a conservative and things like that. Yeah, how wonderful. Um, The... Uh you know, I mean, people have their people who experience this have their minds changed. I was experienced medical marijuana. You yeah, mean? I was a real skeptic for medical marijuana. Look, at the same time that I smoked marijuana, I was a medical marijuana skeptic. <laughs> you hypocrite. Well, no, I just didn't. I just, I'm just like, oh yeah. Oh, you right. just figured it was only to get high. Oh yeah, you got glaucoma. Unless you know, like the glaucoma thing, I'm like, okay. But the rest of it is like, oh yeah, you got a problem and you want to fix it with pot. I never had any doubt about the appetite. The thing. appetite that's, makes a little sense. That's uh, that was unquestionable, but there are still uh, claims that I hear made about marijuana that I don't get behind. Um, you know, people say marijuana is a cure for cancer. Maybe it is, but I want to see some double-blind studies. There's two hundred different that. types of cancer, and um, you know, marijuana doesn't cure them all. That's for certain. I have heard that it's a treatment for certain types mm -hmm. of cancer. I don't know. And the the opinion that I've come to is that I've seen marijuana treat enough illnesses that I don't mm -hmm. care what you claim at this point. I think you've got a right to smoke marijuana if that's what you want to do. And whatever the reason might be, mm -hmm. it doesn't have to, it, for me, I can obviously see that there's some, you know, the war on drugs has uh, wounded on the battlefield and those people are, you know, some people who partake of medical marijuana. But I'm certain that some of the people in California have medical marijuana cards that, oh, they could live without their mm -hmm. marijuana medicine, um, uh, you know, that this is just hooey in order to be able to smoke pot. Fine by oh, me. Yeah. I don't care, you know. That's the law, and they should – forget the law. They should be able to smoke it for whatever reason they want, and if they get a card to be able to smoke it, I don't care if they said they got a bad back. Skipping down the story a little bit here, back to the story about her mother-in-law. She was able to get out of the hospital, though she was still in an immense amount of pain, and they said, you know what? We're going to take our doctor's advice. How many mainstream doctors are advising their terminally ill or chronically ill patients to do exactly what we did? They're the ones who recommended, you know what, go ahead and try medical marijuana. It might help stimulate her appetite. It might help with her nausea. We thought, if you're looking to provide relief or boost in quality of life, why the hell not? It's legal. It's here. And so that's how we got to the pot shop. Marisol Therapeutics is a recreational pot shop in Pueblo West, just 47 miles from the Pancake House and Malkin's nearby home. The shopping experience from the initial decision to head south to the storm of comments that followed in the wake of the article was a historic one for the Malkin family. But what will Michelle remember the most from her first time buying legal weed? What an incredible experience, she says, it was to walk into the shop and have the understanding and compassion of somebody in the business of providing healing. A lot of people from out of state, New York or D.C., would parachute into our state and, state and sneer at the so-called medical veneer that a lot of these shops have. But there's no denying the reality that these places provide the services that people want and need. And that was the upshot of the column. The column created a whirlwind of activity on Malkin's website, both positive and negative. But the takeaways have steeled her resolve and given her a newfound perspective. She says, when I was at the you know, shop... know, nothing's going to convince you. Once you've seen your mother-in-law with, uh, was it cancer or some kind of illness? Uh, yes, yeah, something and bad. She can't keep something down and, uh, you know, has an appetite problem. And then they, and then, you know, she gets some marijuana crackers and suddenly she begins eating. Everybody in the room begins eating. Mm. Screw mm. you and all your sanctimonious <laughs> bullcrap. I've seen it happen. And this is, this is really the problem with opinions. This is the problem yeah. with voting. You know what voting is? Voting is uh, opinion with a gun. Um, the fact is, is that you, uh, your opinion stinks. So does mine. My opinion about your life, irrelevant and stupid. Your opinion about somebody else's life, here's a surprise for you. Shut up. You're dumb. You know, you shouldn't be giving your opinion about other people's lives Unless like this. Unless they ask you. 
Well, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Mm. Oh, and hey, your opinion do you shouldn't. Do you think I should be, be able to be imposing your opinion? Right. On right. Others, you think so. I should be able to smoke medical marijuana for my illness? No, I don't. Okay, goodbye. You're mm. a jerk. When I was at the shop, I told my husband that the clerk seemed like a libertarian to me, said Malkin. What were they doing? They were complaining about the regulations, the bureaucracy, and the taxes. Here's your natural outreach into a non-traditional constituency, right? Malkin does split from the party-line mob mentality in that she doesn't believe that marijuana is a gateway drug. She says, but speaking of gateway drugs, I think this is a gateway policy issue. It's a gateway for getting people to start moving beyond traditional right and left politics, and I think that that's a good thing. Yeah. That's the most interesting statement in the article to me that yeah, she's that she said beyond left and right because she's famous for being on that right, spectrum sure. in a particular place. And she acknowledges uh, the word libertarian as well. So again, that's kind of a it's become more of a buzzword over time, I think. I th I think so, and there have been I think some closet libertarians around the Republican Party who, uh, you know, are going to be coming out over time, especially if Rand Paul does well. It's Rich Paul. Check him out at the 420 Foundation, also nhjury.com, and we'll see you tomorrow night online in the meantime at freetalklive.com. Hi, I'm Derek J. To me, an activist's calling is to actively work to advance a cause. The cause for which I work is personal freedom. I believe my life is best when I engage in voluntary interactions and self-government. I reject the idea that anyone else has a higher claim to my life or my body than I do. I see people who call themselves the government as a threat to my personal freedom. I realize you may feel differently, but my relationship with the people who call themselves the government is completely involuntary. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless, free market, non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. By using their money, you are helping the state. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at WeUseCoins.com. That's WeUseCoins.com. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Cap Black Radio is up next, live after the news, on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Wednesday, May 21st, 2014. Silver is trading at $19.34 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,290 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $492. Antiwar.com reports, reports from multiple administration officials say that the Justice Department will not reveal a court ruling ordering the release of a redacted version of the notorious Barron Memo under the Freedom of Information Act. The courts ordered the memo released in April, saying President Obama's repeated bragging about the drone killings waived any right to secrecy for the memo, which provides the putative legal justification for the president unilaterally assassinating American citizens overseas. The administration gave some access to the memo to members of Congress earlier this month in an effort to rescue the stalled judicial nomination of David Barron, the main author of the memo. The public still has not been allowed to see anything however, beyond President Obama's own repeated claims that the killings are totally on the up and up. Officials say the redaction could take quite some time and that there is no timeline for actually releasing the memo, just a general sense that the Justice Department intends to do so at some point.
You can support FPP Radio by joining the Fans Program. Fans are friends, allies, and numeri supporters. Fans help FPP afford to produce more original content. To learn more or to join the Fans Program, visit fans.fppradio.com. That's F-A-N-S dot fppradio.com. Reuters reports Pennsylvania's ban on same-sex marriage was struck down by a federal judge on Tuesday in the latest court decision in the United States confirming gay couples' rights to marry. Finding Pennsylvania's 1996 Defense of Marriage Act unconstitutional, U.S. District Court Judge John Jones III wrote, By virtue of this ruling, same-sex couples who seek to marry in Pennsylvania may do so, and already married same-sex couples will be recognized as such in the Commonwealth. The ruling makes Pennsylvania the 19th U.S. state where gay marriage is allowed, a movement that has gained momentum since the Supreme Court ruled last June that legally married same-sex couples are eligible for federal benefits. Most recent court rulings allowing gay marriage have included a stay pending appeal, but Jones's ruling did not. There is, however, a three-day waiting period for all weddings in Pennsylvania. The judge noted the issue of gay marriage is a divisive one, and that makes some people deeply uncomfortable. He also compared Pennsylvania's ban on same-sex marriage to school segregation laws overturned by the U.S. Supreme Court's decision in 1954 of Brown v. Board of Education. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. NPR reports, despite Thailand's declaration of martial law in what the army said was an effort to end political unrest, most Thais were going about life as normal. In many ways, it's business as usual for the country of 67 million, where the military has been in power at least as often as the elected politicians. The familiarity of the events led to some interesting scenes with people taking selfies with soldiers on the streets of Bangkok on Tuesday. Most of the population remembers the the 2006 coup d'etat that drove out Prime Minister Thaksin Shinawatra, and many recall multiple times that the army moved out of the barracks and onto the streets. In all, there have been 11 successful coups since 1932, and another handful that have failed. This time, though, Army General Prayuth Chanocha insists what's happening is not a coup, but just a way to restore peace and order for people from all sides. He said martial law would continue until the country is safe and there is stability. One government aide called the army's move half a coup d'etat. Pavan Chacha Valpumkin, associate professor at the Center for Southeast Asian Studies at Kyoto University, is quoted by Time as saying, I think you can call this